And girl, you were scandalous and I loved it. Yeah. Uh, your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. in today. Okay, but one guest. And I don't ever recall interviewing this particular guest. I don't. Although he hasn't been around in a while and I believe I've met him before like at parties, you know, out socially, but I swear, I, <sighs> Genuine will be in the building today. Yeah, The Bachelor. He's got his fifth CD. It's in stores. It's called Back to the Roman numeral two, Da Basics. Uh, I thought this particular genuine would be saying back to, as in T-O, and then the basics. But okay, we'll take it. Genuine, The Bachelor, he's coming in tonight. Plus, we'll talk about uh, the stars, including Gwen Stefani, Oprah Winfrey. We've got the People Poll question. The Vibe Awards comes on tonight. There's a lot going on, yet nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you all, please, don't forget we have advice hour next hour. And um, if you're going to fax in, I'll take your faxes. Well, starting now is probably a good time. 866-WENDY-FAX is the fax number. 866-GET-WENDY. That's the phone number. I'm Wendy Williams. It is what it is. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. What up, what up? It's your boy, Young Jeezy. You already know, man. You're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience on, on 107.5 WBLS. Let's get it. Take my money. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. <laughs> Woo! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. And a bang, da bang, da bang, da bong, 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 bong. Love to love Bug Starsky. I know that's your ish right there. Bop, da bop, da bop, da. And love to Bowser from, what was that show called? Bowser used to be on. Bop, ba, da, ba, ba. Sha, na, na, exactly. Bop, da, bop, bop, bop. Yeah, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. <laughs> so Genuine's coming in today, The Bachelor. Light skin, good hair. <laughs> He's still married to Soleil. They got kids. His life kind of changed after the loss of, is that both parents or one parent? Well, we'll talk to him about it because he, that was like a turning point. And he's got his fifth album in stores now. Back to The Basics. Production with our friend from yesterday, Jazzy Faye. You know what? Somebody had the nerve to call me up today about. And I'm like, you know what? I hate phone calls like this after the damn fact. 
I mean, we had a delightful time yesterday with CeeLo and Jazzy Faye. But why is it that I didn't get the phone call until this morning? Damn, you should have asked Jazzy Faye about the robbery. I'm like, what robbery? <sighs> yeah, well, he was robbed and they took his stuff. And, you know, I'm like, shut up. I didn't, you know, shut up. I don't even want to hear anymore. Why couldn't you have called the behind the scenes line? Goose would have picked up the phone, you know, scribbled it down. And then I would ask him about it. Damn, damn, damn. But Jazzy Faye is producing uh, Genuine and Troy Oliver, who he worked on, I think, he, The Differences CD, which came out back in about 2000 uh, with him. So he and Troy already know each other. The Underdogs. I'm not that familiar with them. What do they do? What else? What have the Underdogs done that I already Justin know? Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, a lot of album cuts. Okay, so Genuine has a nice big budget. Yes. And so he's used uh, The Underdogs as well as The Trackmasters. What about Timberlake? Well, you know, we're going to have to talk to him about Timberland because you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good one. Well, anyway, I look forward to uh, speaking with him and, and all the Girl Fridays. You know, I can't figure you girls out. You all are all too young to even be lusty after Genuine because you guys aren't flinching the, the least. I said Genuine's coming and, you know, back in the day, girls would have been clamoring for the lip gloss, the Aquanet, and a tease and tap comb. You know, with the, with the teeth that are real close so you can tease and tap. You know what I mean. But you girls don't care, do you? I mean, be honest and speak up. Nobody understands head nods and... and yeah, we we care, but we're professional. Well, I understand that. I Thank you, Zoe. I understand that. But it's been five years since he had a CD coming out. You girls are like, what? Average age, 22. So five years ago when Genuine came out, oh, you all might have been like 17. So you, you've grooved to Genuine. Yeah. How many people in the room have had sex to a genuine song? Girls. Not my pony? No, hell no. The girls are my interns. They're like me. We MOP strictly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nobody gonna want that say damn soft and pink. Fast the, past the original I love you. I don't need it reinforced in some, <laughs> you know, make love slow to me. <laughs> you know, stare in my eyes and pull my hair. Spank me, oh. daddy, daddy, oh. daddy. <laughs> You know what I mean? My whole life has changed. No, 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 no. <laughs> but one thing that he has infused is um, is the, the dancing. Like, you know, his dancing is incredible. Remember the dancing with the broom in that one? But my whole life has... No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Grab my hair. Throw me over the car. Oh, oh do me, daddy. Oh, do yeah. me. Spec me harder. Harder. Oh, yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, what are you doing? Oh my God. Oh man, we're gonna start off. Well, I'm just saying, you know. Oh. Thank you. Yo, did you catch this flashback? <laughs> I got the perfect screwed music. Let's start it off regular speed. This is not screwed. What are you doing? Oh, oh no, you're thinking about the wrong thing. Goose, turn this off. <laughs> Art, what's the matter with Goose today? I don't know. Goose is high in life. No, no, that's the screwed music. We're talking about something no totally different. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, Goose okay. is a man of a certain age. <laughs> oh, oh, Goose, you just showed your, you just showed your whole hand in front of millions of people. Oh, Goose is a man of a certain age. He thought the screwed music somehow okay, had to okay. deal with. Next topic. Oh. He, he likes different music, like Caribbean music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. He said next topic. <laughs> Vibe Awards comes on tonight. Oh. Can't wait for that. I don't know whether I'll be in the house for it or not, though. CeeLo's having a party tonight. Oh. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hi, CeeLo. Sorry, that was art. <laughs> but CeeLo's having a party tonight. I think the Bible words come on, though, at like 8 o'clock at night. Or maybe it's 9 o'clock at night. I mean, I know the party doesn't get started probably until like midnight. You know, you, you go through the party. But as soon as I go home after work on like a weekday, forget about it. I get to take it off my clothes and putting on my temporary robe. You know what that is. That's the robe that you have on temporarily between I'm home from work and I'm about to go out to the disco. But once I get the temporary robe on and, you know, my feet 
you know, leave the floor and actually come up to the bed. And then I get all comfortable with the pillows propped up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't try to wake me up at midnight to go to some damn party. I'm swinging. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I have to occupy my time between now and then. Art, do you want to go shopping and then for drinks? Let's do shopping, yes. Let's do shopping. Can we shop and have drinks all the way up until midnight? Huh? Because it's the CeeLo party. I need something to do after the show. If I go home, forget about it. It's a lot of drinking. <laughs> well. <Wow. laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Let's go to the telephone and talk. Hi, it's Wendy. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, Wendy? Hi, I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm pretty good. good. Oh, man, I'm so happy to talk to you. Well, me oh, too. He was like, oh, man, you was the best, Wendy. Wendy, I, I have like a, a, a early um, advice. Please, okay. Wendy. Yeah, go ahead. Let me hear. Okay. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, like a single parent with Wendy, and I... Um, you know, I, I, I got it going on just a little bit. You know, I got my own house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm under 26, mm -hmm. and I have a son or whatever. And I have this guy that's in my life, and um, I really don't know what to do, either to let him go or uh, keep the relationship going on. Um, he had a lot of problems when he was, uh, a lot of little stuff that he went through when he was younger. Now it's kind of like catching up with him since he's getting a little older. And okay. I'm like, I have a lot of responsibilities, and I would like come to, you know, be there with me or whatever. Right. And, um, it's like I don't want to accept nothing less than, you know, okay. my expectation or whatever. Okay. And it's I, like, I don't know if I can definitively tell you to leave or not leave. I need more information from you, for instance. Okay. And we only have about a couple of minutes. Uh, right, how, right, how, right. how old is he? Um, he's a year under me. All right. So he's 25. Uh, does he have children? No, he, he doesn't have any children. Okay, what are the, he just have a lot of hospital bills. And what is physically what, what was physically wrong with him and the hospital bills and whatnot? Um, like uh, he got shot. Oh and, uh, crap! Oh, okay. <laughs> How long is his rap sheet? How long is his? No, no, no. He's never he never got arrested. Okay. He, he got away with, with oh, whatever. A smooth got criminal. Because you know the dummies get caught. <laughs> Okay, he's got lawyer bills. He's gotten shot. Uh, he, does he have a, a, no, no insurance? Okay, yeah, he's paying doctor bills, mm -hmm. and it's like all this stuff. And it's like, wow. But well, when are you going to be able to help me out? And should I stick with him? And he done already been through all this stuff. Well, okay. Well, do you I, give? Do you give him? Do you give him money? Excuse me. Do you give him money? Does he live with you? No, 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 no. But I, I want a family. I want another family, and I want it. You know, I, there's nothing I to say. There's, there's nothing to say that a guy who's been shot with hospital bills can't pull himself up out of the doldrums. I mean, okay. the one thing that he, the two things that he has going for him, which are fabulous in your favor, is that he has no record because he hasn't been caught. So there is a chance for him to get over his criminal past or or whatever he was shot for. Because I'm about to ask you whether he has a job, and chances are you're going to say now. Yeah, he do. He uh, do. Uh, really. He do. Have a job, and he's 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 trying to get everything in order, okay. you know, so he can be with me. And the and other thing, and the other thing that's working right in your, decision. and the other thing that's working in your favor is that he has no kids. Right. Exactly. So why don't you ride it out and see where it goes? I mean, you know, there's it, how's the sex? Okay. So, Thanks, uh, Wendy. I needed that. How is the sex? How is this? Oh, great! Oh, awesome, Wendy! It's, uh, Terrific! It's the, the best wow. I had. And how does and he how does he treat you? Does he raise his he, voice? He and treats me real. He treats me real good. But the thing is, I'm just looking for the, for the future. I'm already a single parent with one. I don't want to be having another child. Then, then and it's up to you to take you, command of your body, and that would mean don't just trust his condom. You get yourself uh, some birth control until right. you found the well. Be sure that you do that because right is one thing. Be proactive. Get yourself some birth control. There's nothing to say this guy can't pull himself up from the bootstraps okay, and so, get so himself together. To, we would think well, all right, I have to get ready to get off. Don't have a child for uh, several years, all right? Stay on the birth control. Now, don't get trapped. It's windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the fuck you say. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5. WBLS. You know, the tickets and everything. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Best part about having an assistant is that you no longer have to call and find out how much your own tickets are. You know how you spend hours on the telephone calling about stupid mess? Like Easy Pass and the ticket you got over in Jersey City? The one that you got up in the Bronx for double parking? 
You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And don't you just put that stuff off until a $25 ticket turns into a $75 yes. ticket? But only because you're agonizing about the phone call. And it almost hurts you to the point that you have a pit in your stomach because you realize, oh, I got to a lot three hours this morning to call and argue with six different, you know, traffic agencies, including, you know, motor vehicles, you know, for, you know, whatever, and Easy Pass. I don't use Easy Pass anymore, and they're still sending me crap. Do you, not, do you understand what I'm saying? And I, it's just a mess. Shout out to Nicole. Nicole Spence, you're fabulous. You do it all. Publicize me. You help me. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, what's going on around here, everybody? It's WBLS 107.5. Hey, you want to know what? And I actually saw this show. Um, they were uh, teaching a bunch of prisoners, actually, which is, is fine. Some of them are trying to get their GED as well. So WBLS is a proud sponsor of the GED Connection. It's this show that comes on TV. And it's a half hour. And when you watch it, they can help you brush up. Add in like a, a guiding factor in you getting your GED. I don't know what was so boring about Sunday morning at like 8 o'clock in the morning. But for whatever it is, you know, my house was sleeping and I happened to have been awake. And I turned on um, the channel and I saw the GED connection. It was, it was, you know, criminals, prisoners, you know, they had on the beige uniforms and stuff. But there were two teachers in the class teaching them. And I said, wow, this is the GED connection. This is what we talk about on BLS. So this is really good. I don't know what it was doing on Sunday. Here it says it airs on Channel 13 um, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. And then it repeats at 12.30 p.m. But it's the GED. GED connection. It's that extra boost that you need if you're working towards your GED. You can log on to our website. Um, I think there might be more information on there about this or anything else. But really, what more information do you need? I told you the air dates: Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 a.m. to 12. A oh, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. and then 12:30 p.m. lunchtime. Okay, that's the GED connection. And Kay is on the telephone. Um, she wants to ask me. She's on line six, Goose. It'll be real quick. She's going to ask me about a book that I've never heard of. Hi, Kay. Hi, Wendy. Um, I called you a couple months ago about the book Simple Desires by Ty Good. Okay. Is this, are you from Newark? Are you, is this you again, Kay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Kay, I really appreciate your diligence, okay? We, I mean, you call quite a bit, and, you know, we get so many books that, that come through, you know, on the show for authors to be on, all right? right. And not all of them make it on the radio. And, okay. and And some of them, once they send their book, they're not on until, like, maybe a year later. So, Kay, what I'm saying is don't call us, we'll call you. Do you understand that with That's all due fine. respect? All right. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. You understand what I'm saying, all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Back me up. Don't just say yes. You're leaving me out here to be hung dry. People are listening like, ugh. Why couldn't she have her on? I think some people might be. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. What? It's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, there's somebody on line five, doesn't want to say his name or her name, 21, called last week about boyfriend's sister, Hohen. Yep. Yeah, tell us the rest of the story. So I told him. Wait, what did, you, what did you tell me? Because it says you called last week. Yeah, um... Someone you, in my family had arrested his sister. Oh, I remember. The yeah. girlfriend was a hoe. <laughs> the person who arrested is your boyfriend's brother who happens to be a cop. Yeah. Yes. And the, and, and the boyfriend's brother told you but mm -hmm. didn't tell your boyfriend. And you wanted to know from me whether you should tell your boyfriend because it, it is his blood sister. Yeah. And I told you, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it's okay. So I told him. Okay. And he was like, why? Are you interested? And I said, what? In He's Hoenn? the one putting her on the corner. He, your your boyfriend is his sister's yes. pimp. <laughs> Did you know that your boyfriend no. had girls working the track? Mm -mm. But you sound excited about it. Does it make? I mean, does he have a regular job? Like, what did you think he did all along to make money? Uh, he told me that he worked for the police department. So then, no doubt, his brother's got his back. His brother, who's a real cop, got has got his. Little brother who's the pimp's back. Yep. How long have you been with your boyfriend? Well, it was two years. I broke up with him. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And now, Mama, I, I don't know what he has if he's very been nice. with any of those girls that exactly. he has on the corner. I don't want to be bothered with that. Very nice. Good. Too long for that drama. So how's the single life? 
Well, so far it's been good. Yeah. Don't don't dive into anything too soon. You've been to, you're only 21. You were with him for two years. I know. I'm not saying sleep with everybody by any means, but mm-hmm. you know, have fun. Yeah. And, and it's the holidays. Please don't feel rushed to get oh, with no. the next man because you want a gift or you want somebody to cuddle with on Valentine's Day or New Year's Eve. Please don't. I won't. It wasn't an upsetting breakup, so I'll be fine. Yeah, all right, good. Very well. <laughs> all right. Well, and thank you for listening to the show. No problem. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. I'm going to talk to you about L.A. weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. L.A. Weight Loss, huge sponsors here on the Wendy Williams Experience. You know, we talk about weight a lot. And, you know, I've been fighting fat all of my life. I finally harnessed it, lost my final crucial 17 pounds. That's what I would call any major weight loss. That I don't need to do any more major weight loss, just maintenance. You know, five pounds here. I would tweak it to as much as 10 pounds. I don't care to lose any more weight than that. Um, thank you, LA Weight Loss. And I'm in no rush to lose the 10 pounds. If I wake up in the morning and I'm 10 pounds lighter, I'm, oh, it's a miracle. But I'm not going to deny myself. LA Weight Loss, that's one of the things they taught me is don't deny yourself the good stuff, but he- here's what you do. Here's how you do it. You know, you flush your body with, you know, your water. You you know, you, you walk a little quicker. You don't have to go to the gym, Wendy, but, you know, work these muscles as you do regular things in life. You know, as you're writing a note to somebody, you know, flex your, look, Art, you can't see, but I have tension going on in my arm as I'm writing down. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a way. There's a way. I, I could sit through the whole genuine interview with my booty cheek tightened, mm. you know, or watch, you know, 10 minutes of, a, of a, one of my favorite sitcoms like Girlfriends last night with a tight, I, I'm not a gym go-to. I, I started going back, but that's only been like the last month. I've been off LA weight loss now for a year and a half and I didn't go to the gym during the, the whole process and I lost my uh, 17 pounds in just under four weeks, excuse me, just under 12 weeks. Sorry, yeah, just under 12 weeks. Healthy, safe, no pills. I didn't go to the gym. I hate to admit that. I'm a lazy splubbo. But I know that many of you all listening are also. You ever feel pressured to lie and say you work out? Because it's such a workout world. You know what I mean? You don't have to feel pressured around me. You're amongst friends. Look, I know. I know. So 1-800-448-TRIM. There is no food group off limits. Uh, You know, one of the great things about LA Weight Loss also is that it comes with a one-on-one weight loss counselor, which is absolutely terrific. You know, um, and also you can go to some of your favorite restaurants. Do you love Friendly's? Doesn't it bring back the days when, you know, life was more innocent? You can go to Friendly's. You can go to Hula Hands. You can go to Houston's. You can go to KFC. Do you want to know what you can order if you go to the Cheese Factory? All kind of stuff. They have asparagus. They've got broccoli. They've got turkey sandwiches. They've got halibut. They've got the pork chops. You can eat the, yep, the pork chops with a half a cup of mashed potatoes. Did, was I telling you yesterday or was I telling you that I ate mashed potatoes on L.A. Weight Loss? They got the Caesar salad going on. What else? Where else do you like to eat, fatty? You like to go to Dairy Queen? How about the DQ fudge bar? No sugar added. The oh, DQ please. homemade hamburger. No. The DQ vanilla orange bar. How about the DQ grilled chicken sandwich? What? Come on. Come on. Come on, fatso. Where else do you want to go? Oh. Bob Evans? Do Bob Evans sound good? How about a little pork chop for my favorite porker? Oh my With the grilled vegetables and a half a baked potato. How about grits? How about oh. burger? How about the oriental chicken salad? I'm talking about just Bob Evans right now. The grilled chicken dinner? I call you fatty because I'm playing with you. I hope that you understand. I always feel like we're family here. You know, you've called me names. I call you names. It's not a thing amongst friends. I'm just trying to give you an example. Oh, Burger King. Come on. Come on, Dumpy. Oh. <laughs> come on. The, fr- the fire grilled chicken and shrimp salad. Oh. The original Whopper Jr. Mm. Shut up. No. That's my favorite sandwich in the whole world. The best invention that could have come along is the Whopper. Do you notice that I said Whopper Jr.? I didn't say cheese. Okay. Unless you would like to have cheese, in which case you can't have that cheese plate that you normally eat when you're watching ER. You know, you can eat cheese cheese on L.A. Weight Loss. Carl's Jr., you out on the West Coast? Chubsy Ubsy, you want a Charles, uh, Carl's Jr.? Go there. You get the charbroiled chicken club, the tossed salad, the hamburger, baked potato once again. Where do you want to go with this Boston Market? Oh you ever gosh. lie to your family on a Sunday and say you're making the big to-do and you sneak out the door and you go to Boston Market, you pick up something for everybody, you throw it in your own pants from home and they think <laughs> that you've really been working all day? 
You too, a oh, pear shaped one, can Ooh. eat at Boston Market. Chicken with the white meat, no skin. Teriyaki chicken grilled. The Oriental grilled chicken salad. That's my favorite at Boston Market. The rice peel off. Oh. Where do you want to go with this? I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, big one. LA weight loss is the way to go. Yes, yes. You can eat luxuriate in the food for God's sakes. Mm. And I say that to you because I'm a foodie. I know what I know what it's like to, you know, and then you discover something like this. You get the great food, plus you got a shrink to oh. talk you down. When you're about to do something really wrong? Come on, man. Let me give you the telephone number. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. It's L.A. Weight Loss or it's nothing. Thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. What? Oh, I forgot about the discount. That's right. Oh, and on top of all that... This week, if you join L.A. Weight Loss, it only costs you $5 for the whole week. Now, m Monday already passed, but they'll probably give you a pass so that next Monday you'll, you know, it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday of this week, and then next Monday, you know, that, that'll be your five days. If you're already on L.A. Weight Loss, by all means, call up, and they'll only be charging you 5 bucks for this full week. Exactly. And they're already affordable, but to be paying 5 bucks for the best weight loss program on earth is Crazy. unheard of. Unheard of. And as you could tell by what I was telling you, it's real food for real people. That's me and you. All right, so we need to continue on. And when we come back, we're going to be doing um, a little something called workplace woes. Oh, do tell. Well, a little something that I conjured up in my head. Yes. Art is actually acting like he didn't know, but as I told you yesterday during the bonus hour, he connects the dots on the show. That's what he does as executive producer. Yeah, exactly. So you connected all the dots with Trev Hollywood. Yes, the one and only. And um, we're going to be doing workplace woes. It's this, just this little thing. I know a lot of people are working while they listen to this show. And I just want to be able to compartmentalize where you complain about what the F is going on at oh. your job. You know what I'm saying? Who's just 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 messing it up for the rest of you? Who's a tattletale? Who you want to get with? Ooh, like that. Ooh. Like that. Who you want to slay on the copy machine? Oh. Whose boss is just out of order? Coworkers who you know you just want to wring their necks? Whatever. You got away with stealing that brand new IBM computer. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You put a piece of duct tape up at the security camera at the elevator and you made it out. Come on now. It's the experience. I like to hear about all that. All right. So Workplace Woes is coming up. Get to your telephones and we'll be doing it in the next break. Uh, and then every day at that particular time. Every day. Starting on this day right here. Workplace Woes. Oh. It's your chance. I'm exhausted talking to you all. I need a nap. <laughs> Vaughn comes up at 7 o'clock. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Until then, it's 107.5 WBLF. What's up? This is John Starks. What's up? This is Moussa Muhammad, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. Hey, yo, what's poppin'? This is your boy, Ron Artest, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams experience. Ow! Mm -hmm. The Wendy Williams Experience is on the radio. Thank you, everybody, for listening and um, and being here every day. We have something new for you today. Um, it's about the workplace woes. I know a lot of people listen to this radio program while at work, and I get your phone calls like during advice hour regarding, um, you know, one of your coworkers that you're messing around with, or one of your coworkers who had bad breath or body odor, or a boss who can't seem to keep his hands on you, or a coworker who you'd love to put your hands all over. So. It's workplace woes, and we're going to do it like this every day at this time. Let's go to line two. Brian is 34 years old, and he's got a workplace woes story. Hi, Brian. Brian. Well, dog on you. Line three, Vernell, 25, another one. Hello. Hi, Vernell. Hey, Miss Wendy. How you doing? How are you? Good. Good. So what's going on at the job? Girl, this is at my old job. Let me just tell you what happened. Okay. Me and this guy were getting it on for months. You hear me? I mean, snack and bellies when we're supposed to be working. Okay? Uh -huh. And um, we were going on for a good year and a half, just whew, all over the place, okay? Uh -huh. And then he's going to go get engaged to some heifer. 
hot damn, I was so mad. But you know what? But you shouldn't have been. You, but the woman being soft and pink. No, yeah, I was going to say, because if he never took you outside of the job. To, to, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. We kept it strictly nine to five. Oh, yeah, then you shouldn't have been upset. Yeah. But I know no. what you mean. Now, now after you he know. got engaged, did he continue to pound you out? Oh. Uh, well, yeah, oh, but damn, he like went back her, and after that, we just we deaded that real quick. We didn't want to keep it going. Damn. Well, but every now and then, when I hear his name or so, I just get a little misty. Oh, yes. Get a little quiver in the belly and oh. a little bit below. Oh. Below. Thank you, Brunel. That was a good one. All right. Have a good day. All right. Thank you for calling. Bye. In the meantime, um, the... Um, Black Enterprise Magazine has their list of most powerful players under 40. I'm waiting for some more names to pop up on my computer because right now there are people that have nothing to do with the workplace and I'm not answering the phone. This break is only about the workplace. so. Uh, but to entertain us until I get my, my computer um, screen reflecting something, Black Enterprise Magazine has um, their new issue coming out on newsstands November 22nd. And the issue is going to profile the 2005... Most powerful players in America under 40 years old. And I just want you to know that, yeah, Wyclef is on the list. He's 33. Pharrell is on the list. He's 32. Kanye West is 28. He's on the list. Uh, Raven Simone is 20. She's on the list. Steven, um, Steven Stout, which I'm not even sure whether this is our Steve Stout, says um, next to his name, founder and CEO of Translations Consulting and Brand Imaging. Is that our Steve Stout? Yes, yeah. Well, congratulations, Stout. Love you, baby. Then Will Smith is on here. He's 37. Stephen A. Smith, um, he's 38. And John Singleton is 38, too. He's on the list. Soledad O'Brien is 39. She's on the list. And Tyler Perry is on the list, too. He's 36. But I do have to tell you that they listed the names in order. And it's the, uh, it's the most powerful players under 40. And all the entertainers and black people um, that I can see are um, after number 13. The first 13 are, are, are you know... It's, it's white America with white America jobs. I don't have the names up on my computer, so therefore I'm not going to the phone. Now, wh- I don't see any, nothing in my hands. How do I know who I'm going to? We're going to, we're going to keep. Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Wendy. Hi, Gwen. Are you at, your, at the workplace? Yes. Hi, Gwen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have your name and information in front of me. That's okay, Wendy. Give it Glad out. to get through to you. Listen, why is there a problem with the females at workplace? They are all, there's always a problem wherever I work at. Females have a problem with envy and communication and conflict. Um, you know, it would be too small-minded of me to say it's in our nature. You know, and it's, it's like we don't know each other personally. Yeah. But just to walk in the room with uh-huh. other females. Yeah. You can't get a decent hi. I'll walk in and say, hi, good morning. Women get it's jealous just, over the stupidest things. Yeah, it's like or competitive okay. over. Yeah, and, and 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 it doesn't help that because it's a man's world, men have made some of us feel like there's only room for one of us, regardless of our color and our background. You know, uh, racially speaking, men have made us feel like there's only room for one of us to to be there. But it's hard because I work in the medical field, mm-hmm. and you, you normally be around females because it's where the setting is usually female. Yes. And when you walk in, you say, good morning, and everybody say, hey. I have a very good friend who happens to be a nurse, and she says that after she got engaged, you know, her, her now husband did a really good job with the engagement ring. And mm-hmm. she uh, she just got all kinds of hate just over an engagement ring. But I know what you're saying. Thank you for calling, Gwen. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, Wendy, I'm the only black girl at my job at an office with an all-new staff. I get paid $46,000 a year, and I'm 28. The women in my office absolutely do not speak to me unless it is absolutely necessary. No good morning or good night. Now, I've been with the company for more than five months, and this situation is starting to really take a toll on me. My husband says that I should stop being a punk, but, Wendy, it is really uncomfortable working in this type of environment. I was out of work for about four months before I got this job, so I'm very intimidated about facing uh, this marketplace again. But here at the job, I have a bunch of broads who don't talk to me. My question is, how should I handle the situation? Should I stick it out, or should I start looking for new employment elsewhere? No, I think that your husband's right. You need to grow a backbone. Nobody's going to sit around and coddle you. You know, if you want change, then you have to be proactive in making the change at your job. And, and demand a good morning. Good morning with a pleasant smile that includes all 32. Not good morning with a smile 
Well, your lips are together and you're smiling like that sourpuss Renee Zellweger. And you know how you can do it. Good morning. Come on, everybody. Zellweger with me. You know, that's not a, you know. All right, let's go to line two. Asia's in Parsippany, and she works at an eyewear place, and she's having uh, race problems there. Hi, Asia. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. What's going on? Um, one day, uh, I work for a major eyewear distribution company, and we have posters and things that we set up in different offices. Mm -hmm. And one of our um, customers called and asked if we had ethnic people on any POP. So oh, you know, they were asking, you know, if we had any. Mm -hmm. And then one of my other co-workers of the Caucasian, Caucasian persuasion mm -hmm. said, tell them they're not fashionable. Wow. So yeah. So I marched myself right downstairs to Human Resources, mm -hmm. and they called her down there. She tried to um, talk to me. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. She tried to clean it up. I just wanted to let her know, watch your back. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, Asia. <laughs> All right. There you go. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You know, it's really funny. When we were um, looking for um, child care at a particular place, you know, after our son was born, we actually didn't go to two different schools because um, there were no black people in any of the advertisements, in any of the posters about the school and whatnot. So that does happen. Keep it here. Advice is coming up God next. Played so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. WBLS, New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call the number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my Lord, have I ready for this day? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. to go out and get an envelope or something. I don't want it on BLS envelope. Doesn't fix. Hey. Oh, thank you, Zoe. Just no BLS envelopes. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's the um, Wendy Williams experience. All right, let's go to the phone because it's a... Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? Is this my medical minute? Your theme. You better shut up. Ah, oh, yeah. This is the theme from ER. Um, no, it is not the theme from Doogie Howser. Yes. It's Wendy's medical minute, everybody. It's time. And today, I'm going to give you a quick tip as it relates to your health in terms of Safe cleaning in your kitchen. Now, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. Got that dirty, nasty. You'd probably be better off eating smegma from the side of your shoe than you would, you know, cleaning out a turkey in your kitchen. It just gets every place. I don't know if you, but if you're like me, you're absolutely grossed out by the idea. <clears throat> Here's a few tips, though, in cleaning your kitchen as it relates to everything, not just the turkey. The sponge. Okay. This is real easy. That dirty, funky sponge, zap it in the microwave for 45 seconds. Every germ will truly be cleaned up. Then you can put it right there at your sink and you're ready for the next thing. The microwave is the cleaner for the sponge. Also, they say use a sponge wand to soak the window in suds rather than a spray bottle. They like the idea of a sponge wand like um. Or, I guess, sponge plane. You know, as opposed to spraying your windows with, with Windex and stuff, they say, push it up there and let the, the warm water drain down. Somehow, they say, the wet window, when it's thoroughly wet, 
works better than the Windex. I don't get that. I don't understand it. And I don't have time to wet a window. They say avoid cleaning your windows during sunny days, though, or during bright lights because the sun dries the solution too quickly and results in streaking. I didn't know that. This is the medical minute. They say use a black rubber squeegee to dry your windows. Who the hell does windows anymore? This medical minute has gone too far. Okay. <laughs> Either the dirt will stay or we will work harder and hire somebody. But you know what they do say? They say that Formula 409 is a fabulous all-in-one. And this is not even sponsored by 409. But that's what they say. You might want to add about a quarter of a cup of rubbing alcohol in it to really make it do the job, though. I never tried that. So I'm going to try that. The 409, I'm going to put a quarter of a cup, a quarter of a cup of rubbing alcohol in your 409. They say that solution disinfects better than solutions that already say antibacterial. A quarter of a cup of alcohol. They say that it cleans corian, sinks, showers, tiles, marble. In case you're worried. A quarter of a cup of rubbing alcohol. So what do we learn from this medical minute? First of all, nobody's doing any damn windows. <laughs> and when it comes time for the windows, we'll just continue to use our Windex. However, the microwave on the dish rag and the sponges is fabulous. And the quarter of a cup of alcohol in your counter cleaning solution is fabulous. And that's Wendy's medical minute. Yes. Thank you. And we'll be doing that every day. That's not exactly medical, but you know what? You don't clean with that stuff and what do you get? Funky turkey mess <laughs> making you sick. You Let's go to line one. Sheba's on the phone. And she needs advice about her man. Hi, Sheba. Hi, Wendy. Now you know I'm not a professional. I'm <laughs> I gotta give you the big shout out, girl. Thank you, Sheba. You, you know, know how long it's been since I've like seen you? I don't know, Sheba, but do you know that I'm navigating my way through men just like you are? Really? It seems as though I learn something new about these creatures every day. I know. But you're 27 years old. I've lived a little bit longer than you. Maybe maybe I can help. <laughs> you know, I am a woman of a certain age. Of course, because you give the best advice in New York. Go ahead. Tr uh, give me a shot. Let me see what we got with you. Okay. You want to hear what's going on? Yes. All right. There's this guy that I've been crazy in love with for like a long time. And we have a lot in common. And it's like so weird that um, me and him even have the same shirt. That's how connected we are. You know? And I can't get in contact with him. Like he's famous and stuff, but it's hard for me to get in contact with him and he doesn't even know I exist basically. Alright, so, so you're gonna... you're a stalkerazzi fan. Damn, see I thought I was talking about <laughs> I thought I was talking to a sane woman. <laughs> no, you're talking to a sane person, but I'm saying like You're trying to get in, you're to trying be... to get in touch with a celebrity. You've got the same would you say well, name? I'm not exactly trying to get in contact with okay. him. I know that sometimes you can meet someone and know that that person is like you. Like that person could be your soulmate. Friend in my head, like me and uh John Legend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm trying not to pay attention to it, but it's like the, yeah, that situation is like there, you know? Hold on for just a moment, Sheba. Sure. All right, look, I'm not going to be spending that much time on this, but I, you know, it would be rude to just hang up on her. No I know, between me and you, I know. But I'm not going to give her the slam. I'm, I just want to walk her through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Goose, we're ready. Which line is she on again? She's on line one. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sheba. Okay, so what's your question to me regarding the celebrity? Okay, well, my question, I called for something about something else, but um, I wanted to know, like, how could I, like, get into the industry? That's one question I had. And another question I had was I wanted to say thank you so much for giving advice earlier about losing weight because I gained, like, over 80 pounds, and oh. it's been the hardest thing to oh. meet, you know, to meet someone and right. to go on in life being right. heavier than you normally are. Right, right, you know? right, right. And so, um, I just want to know, like, Okay, well, you're, you're 27 years old. Right. What do you do right now, Sheba? Um, actually, I'm a computer engineer. Like, I just graduated last year. Mm -hmm. I graduated Good from the you. same school you went to. Northeastern <laughs> University and you. <laughs> Good for you. So, um, well, Sheba, I do have to say that, uh, you know, while the entertainment industry seems like a very exciting industry from the outside, and it definitely is from the uh -huh. inside, uh -huh. uh, 
what do you have to offer? I mean, you're proficient in computer. Okay, so that's great. Yeah, but that hasn't really worked out help like for the whole out. year. Help it's been help. like help. me searching for help. jobs. Internship. You know? There you go. Get an internship, internship at a record label. No, no, no. That I mean. Yes, yes, yes. But the thing is, you don't really get paid that well. Hey, but you're asking too late, okay? Can I be honest with you? Yes. You're 27 years old. You're a grown woman, right. okay? Right. It's never too late, I guess, is what they say. Although, right. in my mind, I do believe that there's certain times when it's too late for certain things. Right. 27 right. is not too late. But you're not willing to intern for free. You missed out on those years. You should have been looking for an internship in college to get into the entertainment right. industry. It's Even if you majored in, commu- in, in computers, right. you should have minored in some, some sort of or gotten an internship. It's difficult. I don't know what to tell it you, Sheep. No. I'll be honest with you. No, no, I have been working as far as, like, I've been working at a couple of corporations. But what happened is because the industry's been really bad for the past year or so, okay, okay. this has been so difficult. But my life is, like, moving into a different direction, okay. unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Like, sometimes you have no control over your destiny. Okay, basically. well, the easiest way to get into the industry, I'm going to have to say, starts mm-hmm. with an internship or, right. or goods and service that you have to offer right. entertainers. True. Um, uh, maybe you can do something with computers within the the, the music industry. I don't know what. Right. right. <laughs> but by not willing to work for free. Right. Well, I'm not saying that. It's just that okay. you're older. They don't want to hire you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you got to go, be honest. Go figure. That. I don't want a 27 year old intern. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you understand. Right. Okay. So I wish you well. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Wendy. <sighs> Whoa. Okay. QB is on line four in Hartford. QB is married and had an affair with a jump off with a tongue ring. Where are we going with this, QB? (laughs) Yo, it's like this. It's like, shorty, she was... She was, she was saying she was giving me a professional whatever. And I didn't know she had a tongue ring on until we started getting into it or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she was doing it so good, you know, that then she was like, you know, I got this funny taste in my mouth. So I'm like, Uh-oh. what are you talking about? So then I look, it was blood on her mouth. Ah! So I'm like... I'm like Wow. wow. I'm like, I'm like, wow. ma, I'm saying, wow. how'd you do that? She was like, I don't know. She, I was just getting into it. So then I went and got an HIV test, but she was like, she ain't got nothing. But I was saying, I checked out. I don't, you know what I'm saying? She clean. I checked her vagina and everything. She's straight or whatever. So now the problem is that my wife, she want to have sex with me, but I'm waiting for the test to come back. And now she's thinking that something wrong. She like, she's thinking that. I'm having an affair with another woman, but, you know what I'm saying, I, I wasn't even having an affair with this woman. You know what I'm saying? It's like one night stand thing, whatever. You know what? Wait, wait, well, where do we go from you can't have sex? First of all, you need to learn to uh, zhuzh up a dramatic lying effect quickly. Like, for instance, if, if I was in your position, immediately I would go to... I have a urinary tract infection. I would cover my basis by calling my GYN, Dr. Yvette. You know what I'm saying? I would, I would ask her, give me the name of the medication that I would get, you know, for something like that. I would go, I'd pick it up at the CVS. I would squeeze the entire tube down the toilet. But he, he would think that I was, I mean, you know, men are so stupid. Okay, so why does your wife think you're having an affair as opposed to you just don't feel like having sex? I just, I just want to, I'm saying, I feel like I have to just put a condom on and just tell her we could try something kinky or do Are you dropping like, the jump off? Because it sounds to me like you're just waiting for test results and you're not going to drop the jump off. You know, if you want to be married, um, I'm sorry, QB, I don't mean to be raising my voice. If How long have you been married, QB? Like, like um, two years. Okay. So do, do you not want to be married anymore? Yeah, I want to be married, but it's just that my wife, she gives me such a difficult time at times that... Can you talk to your wife regarding this difficult time so that, you know, as we enter a new year, you're not dealing with the same from the old year? And now, a jump off does not solve anything. Your wife is still going to nag you. You know, maybe your wife needs to have you sit down and talk to her as opposed to, you know, deceiving her behind your back. That's... But my wife, she, she don't be reasonable, man. It's like, she, she just... She want to control everything half the time, and it's just frustrating that she won't let you. You feel me? She won't let you be a man. So it's like I got to. Maybe go you married the wrong person. What? Where were you ascertaining all this stuff uh, two years ago before you married her? I mean, Wait, if she's I? if she's treating you like uh, you know Walter Mitty, then I, oh, she's she's scared that you know what I'm saying I'm just gonna get with somebody else because she think a lot of women be after me or whatever. But is your wife sexy? Yeah, she's sexy. Hot. Yeah. Is your wife good in bed? No. Oh. 
Yes, you're real good in bed. After you get these, after you get the get these HIV tests, can you leave the jump off alone and concentrate on your wife? Oh, it, most definitely. It, it scared me to death. It scared me to death. But my big issue is, do I just put a car? No. Okay. I, now I'm going to help you uh, with what you asked me. How long has your wife been asking you for sex? Oh man, for like the past like three, four days. Okay, that's we're we're still in the good zone. When will you get the results of your HIV test? Next week, Wednesday. Okay, this is what you do. You're going to go to your local pharmacy, not the one that your wife would go into, another one, uh, you know, somewhere on the other side of town. You're going to ask the pharmacist what a dude would use for urinary tract infection or whatever. Men can get them too. Yeast infection, some damn thing that you can get over the counter. You got me? Oh, so yeah. Then you're going to pick it up from your pharmacy right around the corner. From oh, yeah, your house. That's, that's smart. Yeah, so, that's you, so you, smart. See what, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Make yeah, sure that when you go across town and you talk to your pharmacist, you want the thing that you have to use the longest for the best results. So, you know, something that's like on a seven-day cycle. You know, you got to take a pill a day, you know, or, or, or you know, I, whatever you men do when you get the track infection. Just figure something out. And I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Okay? All right, thanks, Whitney. And leave the jump off alone, QB, and concentrate on your wife. You said she's real wet and she's oh. pretty and whatnot. And if you think she's too bossy, then put it down, man. Tell her. Don't just cower and, and be a bitch ass and, oh. and, and, and go to the next woman. Because that doesn't make you a real man at all. Oh, Wendy, man. Presently, my um, husband just got discharged from the military. But now he's home, and I just want to tell him to get the f out. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> 107.5 WBLS. Mm, I got an anonymous letter. Mm, I'm going to read it, but I'm going to leave the cable. Um, I'm going to leave the name of the company out of it and the names that are being mentioned. Mm. I think I am. I don't know. This might be a little too close to home. A little sticky. Hopefully, I would have made a decision by the bonus hour. Anyway, everybody. Stephanie Cohen and her lovely husband, Ben, invite you to stop by Benjamin Rug and Home Imports this weekend for a special rug promotion. Up, oh, the holidays are coming. It looks so plain in a particular nook of your house, does it? I don't know. I'm asking you. Are you looking to do a little something? Just a little something at wholesale prices so you'll still have money left over for the holidays. Okay. Well, Stephanie's going to be in the store on Sunday. Now, they're open Saturday and Sunday, but you can go in there Sunday and, and um, meet Stephanie, who she and her husband own the place, and she also carries her own line of furniture as well as the Martha Stewart Signature Gallery and the most incredible selection of rugs at wholesale prices. The rugs and furniture at wholesale prices and they have the tchotchkes too which is real great stuff to hang on the walls L the lamps all that great stuff that just pulls a room together benjamin rug and home imports now located at 20 meadowlands parkway i'll give you the store hours and the telephone number 20 meadowlands parkway this is a place that i've gone to several times Got several pieces from here, and now I'm proud to say that they are part of the WBLS advertising family. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, 201-617-9000. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports carries a variety of lines. Like I said, the Martha Stewart Signature Gallery, the Stephanie, Go excuse me, Stephanie Cohen Furniture Line, and an incredible selection of fabulously fashionable rugs everything in the store at wholesale prices and they carry a variety of styles in terms of furniture they have the asian they have the classic gallery which is upstairs they have the traditional and contemporary gallery downstairs then you pull the whole room together with fabulous throw rugs i mean throws like the size of your whole room or just something to sit there in front of the couch what what size do you need what colors are you looking to infuse are you looking for purple color of the season are you looking for red? A shot of vibrance. Tom oversees the making of the rugs. Tom is absolutely thorough when it comes to rug selection. His name, T-O-M, Tom. Tom is your rug man. Go to stephaniecohen.com. Look on Stephanie Cohen's website. Look at some of the incredible stuff and incredible prices they have at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. And then stop by when you get a chance.
Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. Coming soon, you'll be able to see the decorating stylings of their interior designer service. Along with me, I'm a control freak. I got to admit, I'm just not going to leave anything up to just anybody. You know, because but if you're not, you know, but they have an interior design team and they came into the pink room, the legendary pink, pink room here at the radio station and splashed the joint out. Now, I'm a little anal. I'm a bit of a control freak. I'm not going to let anybody have more stake in, in my design than, than me. You know, so... The room is, I would have to say, 60% me, 40% their ideas. Because I got my, you know, I got, but everything I got from Benjamin Ruggin Home Imports. Virtually. I had a couple of things in my storage room at home, I do have to admit. I mean, you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's a collaborative effort. But here's the reason why I had to be a little bit anal about it. Because I can't be, now that I live with those men, I can't, you know, just totally pink out and girl out and stuff like that. You know, a full room. Like, I wouldn't do that to my guys. You know what I mean? Not that I make everything all masculine at home. But, it's, you know, it's neutral. Is this masculine? Is this feminine? You can't really tell. You know? But that's the great thing about having the pink room. The office here. It's your I, space. Yep, it's my space. And and it's not. I don't make it for the guys. And art, you can adapt to anything. Yeah. When you walk into the pink room immediately. How you doing? Yes, yes, yes. And it, it's pink and it's... it's Anyway, thank you, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Original. Um... Pretty soon you'll be seeing the pink room um, on full blast. As soon as it's done, we want to put pictures on the website and so on and so forth. <sighs> StephanieCohen.com. They're wonderful. Oh, by the way, they're really excited about the new financing offer, too. 12 months, no payment, no interest. Exactly. Located on 20 Meadowlands Parkway in fabulous Secaucus, New Jersey. Call them, and they will rush their interior design team out to your house you know, if you don't know what to do with that space, then you go in the store, you pick out stuff. Next thing you know, bam. Yes. Supersize your situation at wholesale prices with Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports located in the fabulous. What do you call it? Uh, the, the What do you do there? Uh, not, I don't want to say discount. The fabulous uh, whole, um, no, 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 no. outlet yes, outlet yes, district yes, 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 of Secaucus, yes, New Jersey. Yes. 201-617-9000. Thank you, Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Tonight. Tonight is a big night. Yes, it is. Over at the Laugh Factory, the Wendy Williams Experience is doing the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show auditions. Oh. Tonight is the pl the place to be is Eighth Avenue at Forty Second Street from six to eight p.m. The auditions will be going down. I might get a chance to stop through. Then again, I might not. I'm not making any promises. These are auditions, and like the people who are, I'm going to be Chuck Barris. Where it all comes down to it, if you make the auditions, no, I we will see each other because I'm Chuck Barris. But it's the Gong Show. Now keep in mind. It is very beautiful if you come on there and you know how to sing. I will always love you by Whitney Houston. Perhaps you'll make it to the actual show. We want singers and freaks and rappers and freaks and contortionists, which is a freak, and dancers. Yes. Freaks. Yes. This is not just the gong show. It's the Wendy Williams Experience gong new show. New and improved. Yes, the new and improved gong show where freaks are absolutely allowed. I play my head. Maybe you play your Johnson. Ooh. <laughs> this is not televised. If you want to take it out. You want fat dancers like rerun. And grab a pen and play those bumps. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're thinking about sometimes. <laughs> this is this is what it will sound like. If you play the bumps, your bump will still skin on your Johnson look. Give me a song. Give me something upbeat. Um, any of And yeah. Rock that. <laughs> and yeah, it doesn't matter what you say. You're playing the bumps on your Johnson. Oh, my God. <laughs> with, with a pencil. A number two. Plays it is. Whoa, turn it up. Turn it up. There you go. Wow. It hurts. Doesn't matter. They've been here. I got, I got cauliflower awards when I was in college. Oh. Ooh. That's 12 years ago. I'm, I'm immune to the pain, and yes, they're hard. Yes, 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 yes. And it, I might as well uh, show off my talent. Mm -hmm.
So I'm playing my cauliflowers for the Wendy Williams experience. Oh, you went boom. Gong show. Yes. Now you must understand that playing the Bumple Still Skins on your Johnson, oh. to me, is hot. And a person who can sing I Will Always Love You without, I mean, pitch perfect, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, the bumps win. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Or else there's a tie. No, I think the bumps win. It depends on how much Hennessy I've had. It's going to go down at the Laugh Factory. We'll be able to drink and judge. Yeah. Oh, my God. You see what I'm saying? No oh, my God. <laughs> and then for those of you who all who can't sing, rap, or, or freak off, we're going to invite you to be in the audience. Not tonight, not tonight, not tonight. Just calm down. Tonight, we're just doing auditions. They're going to be private. They're going to be closed. But when we're ready to unveil this, it's going to be the craziness. Yes, it is. Mm, mm, mm. Understand? The world needs to see it. It's going to be crazy. Do you know how to flap your thighs and let them smack together? <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, right? Right. It's going to be awesome. The Wendy Williams new improved gong show. How many grapes can you fit? Right along your what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> You know, my brother and I are just trifling people. And when we were kids, we used to, I mean, just the grossiosity of it all. Oh, I know. You know. Yeah. How long can you let a burp draw out? <laughs> oh and, you know, like that. Yeah. And of course, if you can bona fide, if you're a good rapper, you know, I mean, we could judge that too in the singing and, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The plethora of talent in the listening audience. Oh, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks about stuff like that. And you know what stuff I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's the Gong Show Freak Show, Wendy Williams Experience yes. Gong Show. <laughs> you should wear something crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am, of course. Shh, don't. Oh, okay, 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 Come on. Okay, 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 Come on. Yes. You don't think I'm going to come dress normal, do you? Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, not tonight. I'm talking about when the Gong Show actually happens. Oh, yeah. So, look, audition. Come on, everybody. Let's all play. It's the Wendy Williams Gong Show auditions. Tonight. Tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Laugh Factory, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue, New York City. And you could very well be picked for our first gong show presentation. Yes. Where I'll be playing Chuck Barris. Artie Life of the Party will be playing J.P. Morgone. Mm. And we'll have our whole band of merry men from the show. Just a drinking and a laughing and judging. And gonging. Yes. And we'll have prizes. This is just gonna, not going to be for nothing. And eventually, we do want to have actual talent scouts in the audience. Are you kidding me? People from the Universal Circus and maybe be able to take that act on the road. <laughs> Playing bumps. <laughs> and how about we get people there from uh, Virgin Records? There you go. Might be able to get you a deal, Shody. Yeah. All that singing. Yeah. Plus the, the prizes and surprises. You know, you know. All right, so that's tonight. Yes. Between 6 and 8 p.m., 42nd Street and 8th Avenue, the Laugh Factory is the place to be for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show auditions. Oh, we're going to be getting it on. And I got just the sense of humor. I'm a little embarrassed by it. I thought that what I, the following that I, you know, the previous that I just said to you, I could have sworn I would have left all that behavior back in junior high. All of it. And my love for MOP-esque type music. Alas, a woman of a certain age, I still embrace stupidity. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> BLS Christmas Party with a Purpose is coming. I know, Goose. I just wanted to let you guys know. Get your tickets to Ticketmaster. All the food, all the drink, all the WBLS radio personalities. On December 17th, the place to be is the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Get your tickets now. Keep listening for your chance to win. To find out more information, go to our website, WBLS.com. Okay, um, we're here until 7 o'clock. Much to your chagrin, I guess. Okay, sorry, uh, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on WBLS. Oh, you know what? Thank you to Kim in Philly. She says, Wendy, Monica's baby's father, fiance, is Rodney Ramon, co-owner of Rocky Records. All right. Thank you for that, Kim. 
Well, the baby is perfectly adorable. And his name is Rodney Ramon III. Rocky Records, I'm assuming, is um, like a record store in Atlanta or something. They said you could blog it if you want. Uh, blogspot.com, does that make sense to you computer people? Anyway, Rocky Records, okay. All right, let me just answer, answer this real quick, then we're going to go to the telephone. It's still advice hour. Genuine's coming up at, in the next hour. Wendy, I need some advice. When do you think is the appropriate time to sleep with someone? I've been seeing someone for two months now, and we still have not had intercourse. I'm 26. Do you think there's a time limit nowadays? Am I being old-fashioned to think two months is too soon? Just getting back into the dating scene, what do you think? Well, without sounding like a slut, I, um, I've seen romance last, you know, for virtually ever or years or whatever, including marriage and babies and the whole bit after, you know, sleeping together on the, the same night that you had your first date. I think it's, it's, it's all according to the level of maturity. Then I've seen, well, through you guys, I've, I've heard where people have waited like two and three months and then you sleep together and emotionally you're already connected, but the sex is just absolutely terrible. And now you're so attached, you don't know how to be more demanding and ask for what you want and so on and so forth. So there are pros and cons to both um, situations. I would say um, let the relationship guide you, you all as individuals. I mean, is he pawing and, you know, leaving you, um, you know, with, you know, turned on every time you see each other or, I mean... You know what I mean? And you said you haven't had intercourse. Does that mean that you've given him a professional? In which case, you might as well just take off your panties. Like my son would say. And damn, damn, damn that Marcus Houston. My son, let your panties hit the floor. Take off all your clothes right now. <sighs> if you ever, ever sing that in school, I will. Mommy, mom, no, 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 no. I'm just making you laugh now. Okay. And not at Thanksgiving either when Nana and Papa come. Yeah, so, you know, let you all be your guide. Okay, now, Janet is in Patterson, and she's on line four, Goose. She's having a legal problem involving her family. Janet's 28 years old. Hey, Janet. Hey. All right, so what are those people doing to you? Um. All right, well, I got some issues. I got three kids. I'm done with college. Mm -hmm. I got, um... I got two different baby fathers, and I don't got custody of none of my kids right now. Okay. What's wrong with you that you don't have custody of your kids? Because mom usually gets custody. Yeah. Well, the issue was when I graduated college, I went, I had just had my second child mm -hmm. when I was graduating, mm -hmm. and my kids' fathers did not want to pay child support. Mm -hmm. And my job is an issue with him, but it's not an issue in the court. Why is your job an issue with him? I don't understand what you mean. Because um, cause he got a problem with what I do. Well, what do you do? What do you do, Janet? I'm, I'm an escort. A prostitute. Oh, no easy. Somewhat, something like that. I mean, it makes you sleep better at night to call it differently. Of course. Wait, hold on for one second. I'm being distracted. She's an escort, a prostitute, a whore. Oh. Slut. A cheap slut. Oh. Bring her back. Okay, so Janet? Yes. Okay, so now how long have you been um, escorting? I did it all through college to get through school because I was on my own. And yeah. my baby father, he moved back in with his mother. He's 30 years old, he lives at home with his mother. Well, you're 28, you have three kids and you're an escort. Oh. So you're really not one to judge. And But you want to know what? I am really glad that you were able to get through college. Now, what did you major in? Let's focus on that. That's what's messed up. I majored in psychology. Okay. And um, I maintain an apartment, even though I don't have my kids. They told me I got to maintain some kind of household to prove that I can take care of them. I'm always maintaining my Good. own space. Good. At what I had my kids back. See, I was getting along with my kid's father last year when I came back. Where are the kids had, staying now? With the father or with your parents? Two of them stay with their father. Okay. In his mother's house because he lives at home with his mother. But he works 12 hours a day and he don't take care of them. Of course. Mm -hmm. And he badmouths me. He put me down. Of course. Of course. He do everything he okay. can possibly do. Janet, this is like, oh, this is a very, very large situation that you have going on. Because, um, you, I, you know, you have the issue of what you do for a living, which it's time to stop. 
We have the issue of what you're planning. Well, I got on. lawyer fees right now to pay. I can't stop. And okay, fly okay, to gotcha, Walmart. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it's time for you to really focus on getting your kids back. But what is your actual question to me? Well, I'm trying to figure out. I cannot do anything lawyer wise because I got people at both ends. I got legal aid telling me and everything saying I don't qualify because of my income, but I don't have any verifiable income. And then when I go there to do something, I don't got no type of help. At so legal like aid. Either- at legal aid. Yeah, there's well, not help. Well, Janet, I mean, um, I'm sorry. J- yeah, Janet, why don't you get a legal on the books job and... It'll pay the bills. No, 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 hold on. And I hate to say this, but real is real. Continue to do your thing and get yourself a little job on the books where you're working just a few hours a week, but continue to do your thing. So then that means that legal aid is looking at like your part-time job at 7-Eleven. But in the meantime, you're still doing your thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, maybe legal aid will treat you differently if you were legally on the books someplace. And left yeah. the feather boa and the cootie cutters home when you go in there talking about your kids. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, well, a the other, joke. well, the other the other little issue is yeah. um, right now. The other issue with the kids is um, oh, we. So okay. That's the only other issue. We. Like, I stopped, we. I stopped smoking, but I gotta fix it up. What do you mean you gotta fix it up? You stop smoking, but you gotta take the tea. Yeah, I'm doing the pizza yeah, regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Regularly, but so, it's like that's the issue now. But the thing is, like, I don't know how to go about this whole situation because my baby father is the one who ratted me out with the weed to the state, and my last child is not by him. So he did it all out of spite here. and all this and this and that. So I don't know how to go about that whole situation when I do go to get them back. Should I just go on the, you know, go on the attack? I'm wondering go, like, whether you really it, deserve to have your kids back. Janet, uh, Janet, leave the weed alone, okay? Oh, yeah, I've been left alone for a few months. My last three oh, tests all okay. came back God, clean and so everything, but the state ain't looking at that. Now, he's just sitting there. He yeah. got me put on top for Look. finally after five years out of spite. Okay, you take this whole conversation, and you need to talk with your attorney about this. I don't have an attorney. I can't you... get an attorney to take the case I need to take. I thought you said you had legal bills. That's why you were uh, walking the track. Yeah, this t- no, I don't walk no track. Uh, how do you do it? Mm, I have a way to go about it without having to be out in the street. You get a phone call, then you meet somebody. Yeah, it's not like that. How much is a BJ? I don't break it down. I just go flat rate per hour. I'm not breaking it down for nothing. Wow. Okay. So then, what's it, like one hour? Mm, anywhere from like three to five. And they can do everything. They can. They can. You know, third input, a professional, uh, stand on your head, dress up, something role like play, that. three to five. Does that or seem better? Does that seem or better? Fair? It depends on where I'm at working. It's low end. Okay. Well, Janet, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you've got a plethora of situations going on here, and I think that you, rather than focus on him, you need to focus on how to get your kids back and stop sharing so much with him. You know, you stop smoking weed if you ever pick up that habit. You never, ever let him know. If never, you know what I mean. Well, we used to do it together. No more. You are a grown woman. Come on, Janet. You're 28. You got three kids, two babies, fathers. You still. It's time to grow up. It's like I, I. I wish you well, Janet. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people, and you know George Bush doesn't care about windy. You don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gonna blow me up? Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams. Experience. 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 Ow. What? Oh, he's outside. All right, wait, hold on. How does, how does my hair look? Wonderful. Should I pull out a little bit more from my headphones? You're good, you're good. Uh, wait, you're like this. Is that a, side. Th- pull this side out a little bit more? Oh. All right. Should I push it up a little bit more over the top? Perfect. Okay. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Nope. Everything's clear. Okay, good. Okay, open the door. Genuine's coming in. No. So I don't plan on flirting or doing any of the above. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Okay, here he comes. What's up, Mom? Cute. You look very thin. Have you lost a lot of weight, huh? Mm. How you doing? What's up, It's nice to have you here. What up, what up, what up? Genuine, I can't for the life of me and take this not as an insult at all. all right, baby. Have we ever interviewed together? Yes, 
Who? Twice. Twice? Yes, mama. Yes, yes. Damn. Philly, Philly. Huh? Yeah, one, nah, one time hit you. No, no, not in Philly. I never talked to him. I remember Philly. I was sitting there. In here. Oh, that was the pre-record room. Right, we yeah, pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah. Well, here we are. Yes, we are. Look we at did. you. You you haven't aged uh, for your fifth CD. <laughs> Five well, C that's a good thing. No, that's a great thing. <laughs> um, do you have a showbiz age or do you tell your real age? Nah, I don't tell the real age. Okay. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm, um, what are you, 27? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, okay. Great. Well, whatever you say. That, well, that that's, that's <laughs> what we're going to be today. It's your world, mama. Everybody, Genuine the Bachelor. Are you still going with The Bachelor? Nah, mama. Because you are very married. Yes, indeed. You see, I'm winning. I'm and you do wear your wedding that's ring. Right. Definitely. That's nice. Definitely. Look at all the diamonds. Yes, definitely. How many carrots is that? This, uh, actually, I don't, I don't, you don't even know. know. I don't you don't know. And it's tasteful. Hers was five. Yeah, yeah. but that's not some Negroidian pimp slap ring. Nah. It, it's just perfect. Yeah, I was like, if, we, if we're going to do this, I got to get something. That, I don't need that washer on my finger. I need something that's going to... You're very to. serious about yes. uh, your marriage to Soleil. <laughs> yes, most definitely. For some reason, I guess we were all thinking that was a fly-by-night thing. Maybe that you didn't even, you know, wife her for real or that you wouldn't. Although your wedding was in, I believe, like, Sister, Sister to Sister magazine or something. Like, pictures of you guys when you actually Ten did hours, it. Yeah. yeah. How many years have you been married now? Twice. I mean, two years, yeah. Two years. Yeah, I said twice. <laughs> well. Two years. No, once. Is this your first years, wedding? <laughs> uh, are you on the brink of divorce? No, 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 no. You've been married for... Two, two years, years, yes. And you have one child that we know of, I believe. I have two kids with her. With her? Yes. Do you have children outside of the relationship? Yes. How many children I'm outside? I can tell you that. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wow. Any of those kids conceived during the two years that you've been no. married? Oh, no. Never. Never would do that. Never. How old's your oldest? I ain't gonna tell you that. It's like, nah, everybody know I got a son. He's right. 14. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> you know this. So, Genuine, everybody, his <laughs> fifth CD is in stores now. Yes, it it's is. It's called Back to the Roman numeral to Da mm -hmm. Basis. Basis. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we got to keep it with her. You know how we do. Is, is Soleil, your wife, is she doing any collabos on this CD? Nah, you know what? She, she's very much into the church right now. She's my balance. You know what I mean? So, um, that's, that's she, a different step for her. Have, she will have nothing to do with this type of music. And That's why know, we haven't heard from her yes, rapping. And you and won't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not. But I still, this is what I met her doing. And um, this is what I enjoy doing. And, you know, I mean, this is what I love to do. And this is. It's what pays the bills. That also. But, you know, in addition to that, this is this is what I love to do. You know what I mean? So it's always a constant walk and it's always a constant fight. And War struggle, in your head or, between exactly. the Lord and your music. Yes. So, so it's. It's always a fight, but I mean, yes. we get through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, um, is she a uh, born again Christian? Yes. Yes. And you guys attend church every Sunday, or is she, as, attends, she attends church? Every and she Sunday. takes the two kids with her? Yes, every Sunday, faithfully. Mm. Yes. <laughs> now, I know that you had a big, because oh, no, I was imagining, oh, waking up that early. Oh, all those different church costumes you have yes, to have on. Indeed. And Soleil was one of the nasty rappers. <laughs> I mean, so your wife, she you was know. Straight yeah, she yeah. was straight forward, yeah. She was real straight so. What was the turning point in her life? You know what? Yeah. Um, when she was uh, when she was pregnant with our first daughter story, she, I mean, I was constantly on her like, all right, mom, you got to come on back after, you know, you had a baby or whatever. Come on back to the music world. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, you know, constantly she was steadily, you know, not not with it. You know what I'm saying? She what, was getting drawn away from it constantly. Was it having, was she, did she have a difficult pregnancy or something? No, like no. a light bulb moment like that? No. Wow, it was just uh, that whole mom just, thing. And, yeah, it was just a mom thing. And, and then that you married her as opposed to just, you know, baby's mom at her. Right, right. You know, she definitely. was probably very grateful for all that. You know, women always are, people always are. I'm sure you're very grateful. You found your soulmate. You all have definitely. been married for two years definitely. and you're a stunning looking couple. Thank you, thank and you. And I'm sure that the kids are absolutely beautiful. Yes, they are. I love them. Does, your, <laughs> does the baby's mother the 14 year old get along with Soleil? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And yes. and does that child come to your house and incorporate? Definitely. And, <laughs> All that. It's a good situation. Do you live within a proximity of each other? Yes, we don't live that far from each other at all. Maybe 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's very nice. And you still call it. Atlanta, your home. No, D.C., Washington, D.C. Okay. Well, Maryland. 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 Yeah. So, um, the new CD, I, yes, I see that you're working with some of the old standards, like yes. Troy Oliver. Troy Oliver, that's my man. Who works with you on the Differences CD. That's my biggest song. And 
and um, uh, Jazzy Faye, who was just up here yesterday. Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask him about the robbery. Okay. Do you know anything about the no, robbery? Because we can talk robbery. about it now. Hey, you see how big my eyes are? I'm like, what robbery? What you talking yeah. about? CeeLo's having a party tonight. Are you going through? No, I'm got, I have a party of my own. I have a party of my own. Because the, cause, cause the, uh, uh, the release date of my album was today. So Is today? They're so celebrating it today at Deep. So. Oh. That's you know, so, what so we're doing. Now. Art? Yes. There, there, there will be two parties. Uh-oh. Tonight, yeah, it's two parties. Yes. Uh, so, um, underdogs are working with you. Well, you know what? I worked with the underdogs, it, you know, um, and I didn't use the songs, but I still had to shout out everybody that I worked yes. with because that's appropriate. Yes. You know what I mean? So that's you. what I did. You know what the mean? track masters. Track masters. They have uh, three joints on there. Nice. Yes. Very yes, nice. Yes, and now, yes. are any any vocal collabos? Any collabos with you? You know me, Wendy. When I do. Genuine, I want you to get genuine. But I did do one collaboration with my boy Jada Kiss. Shout out to Jada Kiss. He yeah. did a joint with me called the In, we in love the Club. Him. Yeah. We love him. We love him. Yeah. So now you had a turning point in your life, um, and I haven't talked to you since then. But one of your parents passed, or was both it of my both parents of your parents? Passed. Passed. Yeah. Refresh me. Was that at the same time like a car accident or something? No, or my my, my dad committed suicide, and and my mom passed the next year with uh, cancer. Oh. So needless to say, you know, I was ripped for a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What year was that? That was 2000 and 2001. Suicide. Yeah. Did you see it coming? Nah, never. Never. If, I'd have done, if I saw it, I'd have definitely have done anything to stop that. Yeah. But Were they together, married no, at the time? No, no. My mom and dad split up when I was in the third grade. Yeah. Yeah. So, were you there um, for your mother? Like, was it a, was it a painful uh, lead up to the cancer? I have an aunt right now who's d dying of cancer, well, and and I was that. just telling them get sorry ready with that. the best of show because I know I'm going to have to go to a funeral soon. Uh, um, we got the dying call wow. over the weekend. Um, it, it, she's been in that. Um, it, you know, battling cancer for about a year and a half, two years. So, mm. it, you know, it's really been something to see her. You know, um, it's a fight too. And it's, yeah, it's, it's the worst. So. That was your light bulb moment. Um, a lot changed for you at that particular point in terms of executing your music and and, and popping your groin um, do your, do in your videos. Because you know we expect, <laughs> we expect. Listen, a, groin. A look, a genuine. Yes, we maybe. we expect sex from you. Yes, definitely. And we expect nasty lyrics in yes. a, in a tasteful way. Yeah, there you go. Are you, you giving it. it on back to basics? I think you said it the best right there in a tasteful way. You know, when I was a little younger. You know, at that time, I didn't really care about what I said. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what it was. You know what I mean? So when I got a little older, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm able to express myself in a more tasteful manner now. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. It's not as raunchy. I'm still doing my thing. Yeah. But it's not as raunchy. Do you love being married? Yes, I do. I do. I, I, I mean, she's my balance, man. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. Because you are such a good... Were you, were you ever strung out on drugs? Never. Never. Now, I used to drink a lot. Yes. I used to drink a do you, lot. Do you think that but, at one point you were an alcoholic? I think I think if you're an alcoholic, you can't just stop on your own. I stopped on my own. Okay, you okay. understand? So do so. you do you get a taste every once in a while? Oh, yeah, do you definitely. have some Hennessy and definitely. champagne tonight definitely. at your party? Definitely. But you know when to pull back. <laughs> definitely, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um it's odd because I mean you're a very good looking man and you you're that. a sex symbol mm -hmm. and um the entire time that you've been married, I never heard of any creepalations you never and will. and other women never will. and whatnot. Um, so are you and Tyrese still best friends? That's my boy. That's my boy. He was my best man at my wedding. Oh wow! Yeah, that's my boy. Uh, yeah. Anybody else famous in that wedding? No, no, no. You know it was real hush hush. I mean, I, I don't really mess with a lot of people in the business. Yeah. Anybody I mess with, you know, talk to they real. So I mean, Tyrese is one of the realest cats that I ever met in my life. So yeah. I mean, I mean, when I met him, we was on uh, the second album, yeah. and from then on, we was we just connected. Very nice. Yeah, that's my boy. So how does? And you'll pardon me for saying this, but the truth is the light. This is an Usher world right now. Yes, definitely. You know, He's doing his thing. <laughs> how does Genuine fit into the Usher world? Because you dance, and, and you're tall, yeah. and you're you're good looking. and you. I mean, you're all the things that, that Usher... I mean, you're taller than him, you know, which is <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh -huh. You know, and, and, you know, not for nothing, but by wearing that wedding ring, there's a certain sexiness in that, because that means, <laughs> damn, he's capable of commitment, which, yeah, which is very attractive. To, you know, a lot of you R and B cats, mm -hmm. you all like to hide when you're right. in. Me, I couldn't relationships. Do that. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. At first, I'm, I, I mean, I must admit, I was a little scared because I believe the hype. I believe that you know your fans ain't gonna be your fans. But at one point or another, you gotta not care about that. You gotta care about who makes you happy and what makes you happy. Yeah. And my wife makes me happy. You yeah. understand? Yeah. yeah. And after all this is done and over. 
I got to go home. Yes. And my wife is going to be there, not my not my fans. So now, how do you fit into the Usher uh, world? As far as that, I really don't think about that. I've been out just as long as he has and been, you know, successful, not as successful, but I've been doing my thing just as well as he has, and I just, I think it's room for everybody. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you got the Marians, you got myself, you got Usher, you got Avon coming out, you got Jaheim, you got a lot of people, but I know what you mean by the dancing and yeah. everything, but... At no point in time did I feel like, you know, threatened or nothing like that yeah. because I've always felt like I'm more edgier right. than that dude. And, yeah. I, and, and I do love him, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's, yeah. He does his thing. Mm. Uh, so I noticed that there's no Missy or Timberland on this CD. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about it. I, I know you want something uh, juicy, but it's not. Um, me and make, Missy, make it up live. Nah, nah. You know the show. No, Nothing's changed. No, girl. <laughs> no, me and Missy, we good. You know, she tore Achilles tendon. I just talked to her about two weeks ago. Um, people don't realize that Missy on only wrote one song for me and that was an, I'm, I'll do anything I'm sorry and that was on the first album it was just the association know, us, yeah exactly yeah, all she, the she time. never really and, and Timberland he did the first album uh -huh. but the second CD he did half of it so really I mean I, the family and everything is still there it, okay. but right now Tim is like real big Tim is like like muscular big mm, you know what I'm saying he, yeah. he's bodybuilding yeah. and so my window of time didn't permit him or I to get together to do this type of um, music together because I, I mean when I when I do it with him, I want his undivided attention. You yes. know what I'm saying? And if he couldn't get that to me, I couldn't couldn't do it. Oh. So we're definitely going to... the diva gonna... genuine is, I want all your attention. <laughs> hey, you know, because you got to... You I mean, this, this is magic here that we create in there. It's you your fifth I mean? CD. When's the last time you had a CD out? I can't even think. 2003. 2003. Yeah. Now, um, your acting career That's never funny. took off the way, I guess, you wanted it to. At that, at that particular time, I really didn't... I, I really wasn't into the acting thing. I did it because they called me like, okay, we need you to do the Moesha show. We need you to do the half and half. Or mm -hmm. We needed you to do the, you know what I'm saying? But the attraction was always there to are, me. Are you more serious about it now? Like Now, yeah, I just changed management. I got Shaquem and okay. Otis Best of uh, Flavor, Flavor Unit. Uh, hey, Shaquem. Hey, yeah. Otis. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's what got me now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went to them and I told them what I wanted to do. And they was, they was like, yeah, man, you got the chops. I never I never understood why you try, didn't try to pursue it more. And I was like, because I love the entertainment. I love the yeah. dance. I love to, you know, do my thing for the crowd on yeah. the stage. Yeah, so, I mean the attraction, like I said, is there though, and I'm 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 a move for, towards that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. We yeah. would, I think it would be good. No I mean, doubt. it's good. No it, it's good to capitalize on as many things as possible, as possible while you got the right. light. You know, right. we were talking about the other day. Snoop <laughs> Dogg right. is coming out with the Snoop Dogg Footlong Dog. The man. But you got to do as many things as possible. You have a certain window, and then the money's gone. How is your money? How's your money been oh, since two thousand three? <laughs> oh do no, you, I'm great because I do other things. I got. I, I think everybody knows about the real estate thing. I caught that way early. No, do and tell. Well, you know, I, I mean, down in Maryland, I don't know how it is everywhere else. Um, if you'd have bought houses and property back in the days for anywhere from 75000 to 150000 right today, if it was land, you can get 400000 Go, boy. You know what I'm saying? So yes. that's what I did back then. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. No Who got way. you into real estate? My boy um, down there, he owns a restaurant. His name is Bernie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Henry Soul Cafe. Mm -hmm. So um, he got me into it. And, nice. um, you know, at first I was scared, you yes. know what I mean, because I, I didn't know nothing about that. Right. But before my mom died, mm -hmm. she always told me to invest in real estate. The least is going to happen is that you're going to get your money back. Right. She said invest in that and diamonds. Yes. I, I, I said I want to do the real estate thing. Yeah, she said diamonds. I, I never really got into that, though, you know, too yeah, much. Yeah, because I'm but, trying to figure out, you know, you get like a fright. It's like investing in a... Like, like you don't, you don't get all every drop back. Yeah, yeah, you sell diamonds when the bottom is about to drop the <laughs> f out, and you've got no real estate, yeah. no nothing to sell. That's what she told me, though. But I, I went the real estate way. Yes, and, and yes, I'm good. yes, I'm good. definitely good for you. Uh, did you have an affair with Miss Jones back in the day? <laughs> that, that's my radio, Peter. An affair? And, and I, well, you know what? An, an affair, affair is no. what a man does when he's married. No, no, no. no. Did you? Would you jump off with Miss Jones? I seem to recall um, Soleil, Soleil, and Jones going. <laughs> Well, I mean, if they would have it, you know, I, I was dealing with her, you know, at that time. You, you know were dealing mean? with Jones at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. How long did that last? You could have been. I, no, not at that time that they was arguing, but uh -huh. I had dealt with her. How long did that last? Not that long. Was it, was she your girlfriend? No, we was just cool. And she's still cool. I mean, it's it's, it's no love loss, nothing like that. You're I mean, sex and kissing. Yeah, it was just you know that happened. Go Jonesy, <laughs> go Jonesy. <laughs> that happened. You know what I'm saying. If Artie was in here, we drop Flex's <laughs> bomb on this conversation. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Goose. Oh, ah, you crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so you just you just, you just Jones. We'll talk later. What's you all that like? 
Uh, do you speak to Aaliyah's family or her brother, who's mm. who's more, I guess, um, your peer? No, I haven't. Um, Missy had told me that you know she speaks to them a lot, but um, no, I haven't. No, I haven't really talked talked to them. And what do you do on your off time? Do you golf? I know the real estate, and I know that real estate thing can get to be like a, a, a something that you enjoy doing on mm-hmm. Sundays. You know, you open up the newspaper, you see what's up. You're constantly on the web. Mm-hmm. I got involved with that uh, back in the early '90s, and I'm not, you know, as deep into it probably as you are mm-hmm. at all. <laughs> but that is fun. Yeah. You, you know, you set up um, a real estate agent. You fly to a different city or something like that. The real estate agent's waiting Phoenix. for you at the airport. They take you all around to places. Mm-hmm. You come back. You get the deal done. But what do you? do other than the real estate to just for you me you know i got daughters so i kick it with my daughters a lot i like to build things i just um built um, an addition onto my house which is a three-car garage okay how far into that are you because i can do the architecture and i can help i'm I'm really into it are you i'm really into it i I just i just actually made a um you remember the arcade cabinets the Mm -hmm. old arcade yes i just made one of those for my kids so (laughs) <laughs> what? I was home doing nothing, so I was. I started picking up the books. I went to Home Depot. Yes, I got the library of books. Yeah, and I actually just. Have started. you ever gone to one of their Saturday classes? I have. No, actually, I haven't. No, no, I no. But they that. do have them classes. Yeah, right? <laughs> they do have them classes. I love they teach that. You that kind of stuff. Yes, I love that stuff too. I watch HGTV, In the Fix, Monster House. All yes, that kind of stuff. yes. I watch all that. You know, I have a list that that <laughs> me and you would probably really enjoy. Oh, well, let's and, do it. And, and and the list is something like um, twenty things that every homeowner. At tools that every homeowner should have. Oh, man, I think I got everything. I can't find the list. Doggone mm-hmm. it. I can't find the list. <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Anyway, uh, am I forgetting to ask you anything? Am I forgetting no, to bring anything just, up? Just tell them to go get that CD in the back. back what to about the that affair right with now. Tony Braxton? Let's talk Ooh. about that. Oh, well, I was what? just trying no, to start yeah, something. Yeah, I was just trying to say, what? I was just fishing, oh everybody. God, no, 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 no. Well, it is delightful speaking with you. It's an honor to speak to you, too. Buddy. And right. um, and tell Soleil, I said, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> and um, the, and you guys, that wasn't sideways. That was just a funny thing to say. <laughs> uh, go out. The CD's in stores now. Back uh-huh. to the basics. Back to the basics. Genuine is back. That's right. And um, I'll probably see you over uh, some Hennessy tonight. Yeah, you will. All come, right. Come see me, baby. I'm saying, All right, yeah. Do that. All right, everybody. Hey man, I owe this brother. He told me he had a very good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. Are you feeling overworked or feeling like you need a little TLC? Is it time for a manicure, a pedicure, or how about a treatment for stressed out hair? You know, the JCPenney Salon is offering $10 off their services for first-time clients. Take time for yourself and visit one of their stylists at the JCPenney Salon and save $10 on any treatment of $30 or more. JCPenney stylists are trained in the latest looks and are experts in every aspect of hair color. So take a break and get a break of $10 off at the JCPenney Salon right inside your JCPenney JC Penny store. Your life, your hair, JC Penny Salons. WBLS, you're calling number 10? Oh my God. Guess what? <laughs> you just picked up your share of the money. You just picked up $1,000. I got to pull over, girl. I'm driving. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You could be our next winner. Well, I'm glad that we've made life a little easier for you, Bert. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let everybody know the only radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. I love 107.5 WBLS. Yeah. Damn. I'm sorry. This hand is so good, I don't know whether to spit it out. Wait, hold on. (laughs) My son discovered this for both of us over the weekend. Sugar-free icebreakers. Sour. The flavors are pink lemonade, apple, tangerine, and watermelon. And they're in one of these Altoid type cases. The boy picked him up at the CVS on Saturday and said, Mommy, let's share these. I said, Okay, you know, they are they sugar free? And he knows how to he knows you know how to recognize that word. And he said, Yep, because I told him we can get one thing. And I'll be damned, I think I ate more of them than he did. After I finished dropping off at school this morning, I see I'm sure stop by the store and mm, they're good. Wendy, oh, this is from Pam in Harlem. Hey, Pam. 
She says, Wendy, the numbers for Get Rich or Die Trying were not what I expected. Hell, I believe it's not what people behind the movie expected. It came in fourth at the box office with $16.5 million. That's damn near a flop to, I guess, what they expected, at least $60 million. Is 50 becoming overexposed? Murder Inc. trial is tomorrow. Yes, thank you for that reminder, Pam. Yeah, it's about to go down with Murder Inc. They're done. Um, and in, as far as the 50 movie, uh, I mean, as a layperson, meaning a person who's not in the movie industry, I don't think anything in the top five is a flop. Is, is that? And you know, too, the he, fact that a lot of... Um, a lot of cinemas won't carry it. And it, that's another thing. It was carried limited release. Chicken Little is killing them at the box office. Jennifer Aniston's Derail uh, just opened up, which you know her and her pity party. You know, they expected everybody to run to the office. For, and yeah, Derail did beat him, but but not by much. Um, I can... He, you, is he overexposed? No. Oh. I don't think that he's overexposed. Uh, and, and and he's not even friend to the show because he's never even been up here. But I got to be honest with my thoughts. I mean, I thought the movie was what it was. I thought it was good for what it was. And um, no, it wasn't an acting stretch, as many of you pointed out, when you're playing yourself in a movie. No, that is not an acting stretch. We don't know that he can act. But you know what? He's going to be getting script after script after this. I, I think that this was a hit by Hollywood standards. And, and he's going to be doing... No, I don't think it, that it was as good as 8 Mile. You know, but then again, Eight Mile was also nationwide. And Eight Mile, you know, if you put Get Rich or Die Trying next to Eight Mile, I'm sorry, but it goes right back to the old school. Black versus white. Who's going to win in America? The white boy. But 50 is doing his thing. As a matter of fact, I got to tell you something else regarding 50 um, when the rest of the class gets back together um, in our next break. But yeah, no, 50. I mean, Pam. That, that's not a flop. That's a. I think. I think that that they did well. You know, I think. Yeah, I think they did well. WBLS Christmas party with a purpose is coming up. That's going to be our big WBLS to do for the holidays. We do it every year. It always has a purpose, and whatever the the organization is that we choose, we give them money. This year, it's the Anti Domestic Violence Programs Day One and Safe Horizons. So, if you would like to be a part of our WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose, you can purchase your tickets right now at Ticketmaster, 212-307-7171. Go to our website for more details at WBLS.com, or keep listening for your chance to win. It's going to be at the Marriott Marquis, um, which is at 45th Street and Broadway, right here in Times Square, New York. And uh, in the Marriott Marquis, the party's actually going to be in the Broadway Ballroom. Oh, it's going to be fabulous. Jaheem, Donnell Jones, you know, fabulous entertainment, the holiday buffet, the great food, the liquor, the the the, the WBLS radio personalities will all be there. Um, so it's going to be a really terrific party. And I'll see you there. We'll all be there. Vaughn will see you there too. Steve, Harvey, and, you know, Cousin Tommy, and Tripp, Mark Jordan in the middays. Yeah, we'll all see you there. Champagne. We'll all, Hal Jackson. We'll all be there. Vinnie Brown will be there too, in case you want to curse him out about anything dealing with the radio station. You just need to know that's the king of all programming. So if there's something you don't like, see him. Vinnie Brown. If. You don't know who it is that you're supposed to be complaining to? Ask me. I'll point you to everybody um, who makes the rules around here and signs the checks. <laughs> it can never be nice. It always has to go into sign. Go, Jonesy, though. But I'm saying, right? I'm a little distracted right now. Miss Jones was slapping skins with genuine wine. <laughs> And Soleil tried to, Jones, were you trying to get back with Genuine or trying to jump off with him while he was dating Soleil? Like, why was she mad? I would have asked Genuine, but we were having a nice conversation. I didn't want to turn it that way. I know how this show is, and I know that, that primarily it's that way because I have the wicked mind, and so do you all. Like, look at E.T. faxing in. The man is still in the other room doing drops. Don't forget to have him do the how you doing. And tell him to do something that says happy holidays. So look, let's listen to E.T.'s facts. 
Wendy Genuine has four other kids besides the two he mentioned. Now, you know, <laughs> you know, oh he said he said he didn't want to talk about how many kids he had. I guess he was a bit unprotected and sloppy back before Soleil. But you know what? His whole life has changed <laughs> since you came here. <laughs> exactly. You all are a What else do I need to be reading regarding my radio station? Um, oh, 525 is your chance to pick up your instant WVLS cash. Yep, we still have money left from our $107,000 cash guarantee. Man, we've been doing this contest for eons. But it takes a long time to give away $107,000. I would like to know what the tally is. That's one question that you walk up to a boss at the um, Christmas party. Mm -hmm. How much longer are you all going to be giving away the money? And hopefully they'll say, you know, the first of the year. I think that we, t that we time this out to like right around the first of the year, right around Christmas time. You know, that that'll be it. But listen, your next chance to win, and you know, you win. Listen, we're giving away $1,000 three times a day. 7.15 in the morning with Steve Harvey. 12.15 with Mark Jordan and the fabulous Mark Jordan midday show. And then 5.25 with the Wendy Williams Experience. Three times a day, five days a week, 1000 bucks. So uh, the winning still continues today. And this hour of the show, can you hold up that sign again, Goose? Is brought to you by... Visa! Yeah! Visa! Oh, and do I have to talk about LA Weight Loss? Yes. Did I see it there? 1 yes. 800 448 Trim. 1 800 448 TRIM. Do you need more specifics about the weight loss program? I feel like I've been talking about LA Weight Loss forever. They are fabulous, fabulous, longtime clients at this point of the radio station. They particularly um, do a lot of sponsoring here on the Wendy Williams Experience because I am the person on the staff who lost weight on LA Weight Loss. So, um, and I want you to know that. LA Weight Loss works with you to lose the weight. You will get a one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor um, who is like a weight loss shrink. Also, when you walk in the door and you explain to them what you, lo what you like and what you don't like to eat, they will do a diet, a, a weight loss plan just for you. And I know that you're nervous because I know that we're all busy and we all, despite what we want to admit to, eat frozen food at some point or another. You might make a fresh meat, but your vegetable might not be fresh picked from Whole Foods. It might be bird's eye. Have you ever had the Alfredo chicken from bird's eye? Oh, my gosh. Meal on the. Do you know you can eat that on L.A. Weight Loss? Do you know that L.A. Weight Loss is compatible with a whole bunch of fabulous stuff in your grocer's freezer? I swear by the lean pockets. I got my little 97-pound 90, five-year-old uh, doing lean pockets, too. He doesn't need to know that they're half fat, even though somehow he already knows that, which is a little sick because it's a sign of the times, like a five-year-old is asking, is something half fat? I never remember saying that to him. Lean pockets, lean cuisine. I'm the lean cuisine queen. Have you ever had budget gourmet? See, all this stuff. Okay, from the budget gourmet, I can tell you right now, Zoe, do you know that you can have the low-fat angel hair pasta with chunky tomato and sauce? How about the low-fat beef stroganoff? The low-fat orange glazed chicken, which is my favorite budget gourmet entree. The low-fat penne pasta with chunky tomato sauce. Low-fat spaghetti marinara. Low-fat ziti. Low-fat rigatoni with cream. Did, did I say cream sauce? That's right. Cream sauce on a weight loss program. Mm. Hello? Hello, ladies on the go, too busy to do uh, a, a full meal. Have you ever tried the Michelina? See? Oh, Michelina. Exactly. in the frozen foods. Low-fat black bean chili. Low-fat macaroni and cheese. Low-fat. Mm, all I'm saying, have you ever had Life Choice frozen? How about the Uncle Ben's rice bowls? Yes, yes, yes. I make those for my crew. They are all a part of L.A. Weight Loss. Have, have you ever had the vegetarian entrees from Amy's Kitchen? You have, Zoe? They're all a part of the L.A. weight loss lifestyle. I am telling you right now, it is. I lost 17 pounds. I've kept it off. This was over a year and a half ago. I'm a foodie. I like to eat. You cannot deprive me. Baked potatoes. The, what is it? It all starts with a telephone call, my friends. And this week, you can get on L.A. Weight Loss for only $5. $5 for this week. If you already happen to be part of the L.A. Weight Loss family, how you doing? You need to call up and make sure that they only charge you $5 for being on the plan this week. L.A. Weight Loss is already affordable. But here they go giving great deals. They're already affordable. 
I'm disgusted. Call and find out. 1-800-448-TRIM. Go, Jonesy! Ah! <laughs> Did he pull your hair and spank you? You know what they say about tall, skinny men. Ow! 1-800-448-TRIM. It's L.A. weight loss or nothing. Hey. It's Wendy, the greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams Experience. I had the pleasure of meeting the shoe guru, Kenneth Cole, um, the other day. We are both co-chairing the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS Choose Life Awards presentation. Uh, here in New York City on Monday, December 5th. And Kenneth Cole um, is a lovely man. I mean, there's no other way, way to say it. And I'm just, I can't wait until this gala. It's a big to-do. It's a black tie. It's um, going to be at the Lighthouse Restaurant, which is at Chelsea Pier. A really swanky, you know, five-star type of joint. And they're really splashing it out. I was really honored to be um, asked to be on the committee for this. Um, there's all kind of, you know, important people involved. And Kenneth Cole was just added to it as a co-chair. It's black tie attire. And then the tables go from, um, well, $25,000 for a table then there's a $10,000 table. Then there's a $5,000 table. And then after that, they're just tickets. They're $2,500 tickets, $1,000 tickets, and then a $500 ticket is the cheapest. So this is a big, big gala. And, um, you know, so my mind has been just, you know, every place and on the Thanksgiving table. You know, what am I going to have for Thanksgiving dinner and all like that? You know, I just want to make it real nice this year. This was... This was a difficult year, I guess, for for um, for me and my family. You know, personally, like behind the scenes and stuff. Um, I don't know how the year was for you guys, but you know, I just figure if we end it on a on a high note, you know, with like good food. Food solves a lot of problems, or at least distract. Good liquor, you know, take us where we need to go, and and nobody has to clean up. Like, cause I'm big on let the food crust up on the plates. You know, we'll get to it on Saturday. Mind you, Thanksgiving's Thursday. You know what I mean? We'll get to it Saturday. And then by Saturday, I'm like, oh, let's leave it for Mrs. Lopez on Monday. You know what I mean? I used to not be able to do that, you know, because I've lived in tons of apartments. But, you know, apartments, no matter how nice they are, there's always something crawling in from one, from some, you know, you can't leave anything out. You know. But I have no problem doing that, you know. Just so that everybody's comfortable. So my mother's not getting up, ah, you know, Tupperwareing and whatnot. Anyway, happy holidays. I just picked up my Zagat guide, actually. You know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going to call around different places that have particular things that I, you know, I just can't do all the cooking. I just, you know, I thought that I was a woman on a mission and all like that. But you know what? I'm being uh, real, real with myself. And I refuse to have my parents, you know, come to town and, and do all that running around and stuff like that, you know. So they make the turkey. And then, you know, like I'm calling around. I want to serve, you know, soup before the meal. The way I want to do it is I want to have a nice, thick, hearty soup, and I want to gut out real crusty bread. You know, the, the bread that looks like a flying saucer, but you gut out the top so it becomes a bowl. Like a sourdough, like a sourdough bread or something like that. So I got my Zagat guide to see who makes the best soup. I know there's good soup here at, at Park Avenue, right where we work, Park Avenue, 34th Street. I don't want good. You know what I mean? I want great. So I'm going to look in here and see who makes the great soup. Then I'm going to start doing a taste test of the different foods. Starting next week. And then I want to know who makes the best, crustiest flying saucer bread. You know, I want it to be shaped like that. Then I want to be able to gut it out and whatnot and put the soup in. Then afterwards, break down the bread. And as Whitney would say on um, being Bobby Brown, sop it up, sop it up. <laughs> sop it up, sop it up. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, shout out to all the skinny people. You couldn't understand that. That's, that's fat thoughts there. That's fat thoughts. Sop it up. I think that's a fat person. Fat, fat person invented that word. Sop it up. Sop it up. Mm. Sop it up. Sop. I remember when I was a kid, my mom would make um, um, 
what were you doing out there for so long, Arthur? I forgot I worked here. I was listening to the Wendy Williams show. It was so captivating. You weren't even in here during Genuine. Did you hear the interview? I loved it. I loved it. Like I said, I forgot I worked here. I was so captivated by the radio. I was by the radio. Which radio were you by? That'll give me a hint as to exactly what you were doing. I was in there with Vinnie Brown's radio. Oh, our boss. Yes. Was he captivated? Yes, he was, as always. Were you doing more talking or more listening? More listening. Good. We had to stop our meeting to listen. He doesn't listen as much as I would like. He listens more than you think. Oh. Yeah. It was a great interview, actually. Talk about Miss Jones. Yeah. I thought you said you listened to it. Why are you asking me that I talk about Miss Jones? You didn't listen to it. You didn't listen, you liar. <laughs> Whatever. That's the goose. You call me fat. I could lose weight. I'm what can you? Goose. Oh. You look good. I'm talking to goose. Oh. Oh. Here you go, two goose. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Did you see Genuine's teeth? They were white and just, and his gums were healthy. Just his whole. He's a heartthrob, though. So, you know, he got to have it all together. He's cool. Yeah, really. Yeah. Did you hear what he said about Soleil? Yes, he loves her very much. He's very much in love with her. See, he doesn't know. Because <laughs> there was more to the story than that. Did you hear what he said Soleil is doing with her life right now? Yes, yeah, she's into the Lord. She's born again Christian. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. And he has like 11 kids or something like that. Well, he didn't talk about that. Oh. He only admitted to one outside of his marriage. He's got two with Soleil and a 14-year-old son. However, E.T. did fax in. <laughs> oh. And let us know he has four more kids that he didn't talk about, oh. honey. Oh. <laughs> That's the sloppy dilsy. <laughs> but that was before that was before Soleil. He's been married for two years. Everybody calm down. Did you hear about that HIV positive man in Ontario, Canada, who's going to stand trial for first degree murder? Charges in oh. connection with the death of two women who were allegedly his wow. sexual partners. That's wow. right. You people walking around there with a dirty do ha ka 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 <laughs> with the infected region. You are murderers. Oh. And you're going to be in trouble. Oh. Call the cops. Oh. This man is 49 years old. He's accused of having unprotected sex with at least 13 women without disclosing his health status. And two women that he had uh, sex with. First of all, this man was... Wait, 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 Goose, let me have another minute or two. Okay. Affiliates, wait a minute. This is an important uh, story. Two women that he was accused of have uh, of killing, let's call it what is, of killing, uh -oh. <laughs> were from Ontario. He was diagnosed with HIV positive status, HIV positive status in 1996. Somewhere in there, it developed into full-blown AIDS. Now, like I said, two of the women are from Ontario, where he's from. One of the women died in December of 2003. The other one died in... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was two people, so I was, trying to, I, was, no, I was doubling it up. It was two deaths. Oh, okay. Wait, stop it. Stop. Okay, okay. okay. How do you double up? <laughs> I mean, you know, one for each day. It was proper respect. What if it's five people? Oh, okay. You finished the story. <laughs> All right. Let me show you. Let me show you another twist. Okay. Where's, that, where's that button? Right there, right there. Okay. <laughs> when I press it, it's going to stop, right? No, it no. stops with the stop button. All right. Stop it. Oh, we have to press hard on that. Yes, it is. You need to go back into Vinnie Brown and tell him we need a new one of these. Oh, wait. That stop. Oh, I can't stop it's, 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 it. Stop, stop. Okay. This is what it sounds like when something dramatic happens in the traffic. Look. Wait, wait, no, no, I was trying to do so. Wait, oh, well, that's corny. All right, I'm corning it out. I was trying to do like you did with your horn. Oh. Never mind, I let it go too long. Oh, I'm sorry, I ruined it. You know what? F me. Oh, stop. <laughs> I ruined my own damn show. That's why I stay off the buttons. I was trying to do dun, da da dun, 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 da 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 Yeah, no, something like that. So All right, I have to go into the break, but we're going to finish talking about this killer. Oh! <laughs>
and uh, gossip too. Yes. And there's trouble in Maya's camp. Ooh. And we'll talk. Keep it here. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> hey. Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get you, but that book is fire. <laughs> yeah, I thought you. BLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. A struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash. What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40 something year old body. No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Hey, what's happening? This is Dwelle. This is Faith Evans. Congratulations. WBLS. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Eric Benet. Hey, hey, hey. This is your girl, Angie Stone. Hi, this is Brian McDonough. Congratulations, BLS, on winning the Marconi Award for Station of the Year. Congratulations, BLS. For Urban Station of the Year. 107.5. We're a winner. WBLS. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gonna blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Like if worst comes to worst, I just wear a baseball hat with that. Oh. Hold on a second, everybody. I'm sorry. We were talking about the HIV killer. Oh. <laughs> so, here, okay. So where we um, were in our last break is that he was diagnosed HIV positive in 1996. He has since slept with approximately 13 women. He never disclosed his health status, never wore a condom, never did anything. Two of the women are now dead. One died in December of 2003. It's a black man, by the way. And one died in May of 2004. He is also accused of endangering the lives of the other 11 women that were his sexual partners. It adds that um, in Supreme Court, they've ruled that it, you don't have to say that you're HIV positive when you're having sex in Canada, apparently. His name is, let me, let me get you his name just in case you've had sex with him. His name is, um, oh, I can't even pronounce it. Johnson Apenga Aziga. Is that African? I don't know. Anyway. His defense of people are saying that, that, you know, he never had to say that he was HIV infected when he had sex. And then his attorney goes on to say, let me explain this to you. If someone walked into a restaurant and ordered a meal and the chef deliberately poisoned the meal, you could hardly say, well, you agreed to eat the food, didn't you? It's no different with the women in this case. Well, damn, there's a technicality in the law. You have to say you're HIV positive. Well, then let's let's make that a law. Now, I hope they fry him. He's 49 years old. He's lived his life. <laughs> Apparently. And now in the Maya camp, I'm going to open up the phone lines in a second, everybody. Is there anybody back there, Stephanie, um, on, on phones? Okay. Late last week. Oh, I got this from the Maya camp. So let me read this official status. Alrighty. Late last week, Mr. Lindsey Guion of Guion Partners was fired from the management team of the Grammy award winning singer Maya. Sidebar. Maya won a Grammy? Question. Yeah. The basis of his dismissal was on the evidence of fraud and theft. Ooh. It was stated that Mr. Guayan uh, allegedly accepted various deposits into his personal banking account on Maya's behalf for performances and appearances and never informed Maya that he had this money. Nor did he inform upper management of these monies that were signed off to him. So he's stolen. 
and Maya's fired him. And she just wants us all to know. So, you all, if you happen to get a phone call from Lindsey uh, Guillen saying that, you know, he represents Maya, ignore it. He's being accused of being a thief and um, of lying. Thank you, Maya's camp, for rushing that over. Because Maya's people are always asking us to do something. Never been on the show. She's scared to death of us. And I was talking about um, 50 Cent um, a little bit earlier, saying that I liked the movie and it was what it was. And no, I don't think that 50 is overexposed. I don't. Well, get ready because there's another thing going on with the G-Unit. G-Unit books. Arthur, you like to read G-Unit books. Yes. They're going to be released through Pocket MTV books. And they're going to feature tales that will tell the truth about the life, the sex, the guns, the cash, the brutal highs, the short-lived players on the streets. Mm -hmm. The first G-Unit book line will be written by Nikki Taylor, author of The Glamorous Life. Wow. Go, uh, Nikki, and a hustler's wife. Go, Nikki. Nikki Turner. Nikki Turner, I love her books. And the first book is scheduled to be released, published, um, and for release in 2007. So we would have forgotten about this. Damn. Why are they telling us now? 2007. It doesn't take that long to get the books out like that. I mean, my book will be out in my my next book to start my novel series in June of 2006. And I just signed the paperwork in the fall. The talks were late summer. You know, I mean, everything went real fast. We took our, um, you know, our strolls along the publishing area of, of Manhattan to go to the various publishing houses. Within weeks, we knew... Who was given the best deal? Who were we going to sign with? A few weeks later, we signed the paperwork. Next thing I know, I'm in an ad meeting in front of a bunch of people who are going to be fanning out and selling the book. And next thing you know, I'm going off to Berlin in December to, to hawk it. I'm taking my book, my book cover shots for my first and second book in my novel series on Saturday. Right now. Art, I shared with you some of the drama that is going on oh, in the cover. Love it. The book's not about me, but you know I'm a cheap bitch. So I try to cut costs wherever I can. Don't hire a model. Hold on. I don't care if she's $5 or $5,000 for the day. I'll do it. We need the budget for other things. So Steve Lindsay, who happens to be sitting next to me right now, Steve Lindsay on hair and makeup. Hey, Wendy. How are you doing? Steve, you already know that um, my main character, Ritz Harper, she looks very much like Robin Givens. Oh, okay. And so she has black hair. And uh, she weaves. Sometimes she weaves short, sometimes she weaves long, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't look anything like Robin Givens, but we will strategically and abstractly take the picture. We can do that. So you all will know it's me because I'm telling you, but you're not going to know it's me from looking. And that's just me trying to save a buck in the budget. Now, see, that same $5,000 or $500 or $5 that gets spent someplace else, but I'll be damned if it gets spent on a model for the cover. No. When I can perfectly do it myself. <laughs> With the makeup and hair stylings of Steve Lindsay. Well, thank you so much. Salon Santa Cruz, Madison doing? Avenue is where he works at. Did you have a lot of clients tonight? Um, actually, no. It was quiet. Well, you've been away. I've been away for three weeks, practically. So I've missed you. Have you? I missed you. Well, you know, I've had a couple of emergencies. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've managed. <laughs> oh, no, how dare you? <laughs> he gave me the, oh boy, mm. look. I've met, you like my hair today? I like it. Do you it like my nice. makeup? Do you like this lipstick? Uh huh. It's electric pink. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah, you need to line though. Uh, I need a lip liner. Mm. Like Iman says, focus, focus. You know, <laughs> I like visible lip liner. And you might call it cheap and trampy. And I was watching on E where they're saying, you know, the style do's and don'ts. Visible lip liner is very 80s. But like Iman says, and I'll tell you who told me that Iman says this. What's his name? Sam Fine. Sam Fine. Oh, yeah. The makeup artist to many stars. He says, look, Wendy, Iman is one of the many women who still loves vis visible lip liner. Because she says to me, Sam, I want them to focus. I don't want their eyes to be all up. Focus. Focus. Wh what color lip liner? Just a little darker. Just enough just to bring out the lips. Yes. You know? Yes. See, a little darker. Not the same color as the lips, a little just darker. A, just a hint darker. <laughs> you know me, I'll go to black magic marker. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's the G-Unit books. Oh, whose phone is work ringing? Oh, that's yours. Somebody knows you're here.
Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the judge. Oh, your friend. Mm -hmm. So, um, Kanye West is being countersued. Apparently, that DJ in Chicago who sued Kanye earlier this year is now fighting back. He's got a countersuit. Now, you'll remember, um, Kanye sued him for... What did he sue him for, Art? Oh, having a bunch of music? His masters. That's right, his masters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in August, DJ E. Smoove, his name is Eric Miller, E. Smoove filed a lawsuit seeking $1.3 million from Kanye. And also, E. Smoove wants to keep the distribution from Kanye. These are unreleased songs. Excuse me. That's Kanye's suit. I'm getting confused. Which is nothing unusual. Kanye filed the $1.3 million lawsuit against E. Smoove. Kanye wanted his distribution of, and the unreleased songs back. And wanted E. Smoove to stop using his name in connection with tracks. Well, now E. Smoove has struck back. And he filed his lawsuit on October 28th. And his lawsuit is for $10.4 million. And he wants the profits from the as yet unreleased recordings. He's already calculating in his head what, the pro what these songs would bring in. He also claims that um, he co-authored the recordings. So he needs the money anyway because he co-authored. -co He's also alleging that he worked with Kanye West in the mid-90s on 10 tracks, including Ho and Stop Frontin'. In the meantime, Kanye West's lawyers claim that Mr. Miller, E. Smoove, shopped the tracks by showing fake contract between E. Smoove, e. Smoove and Kanye. So there's a lot going on. None of it that I care about. I mean, I thought I'd share that with you all. Oh, see, this is somebody faxing in about Janet from Advice Hour, who was an escort with three kids by two different babies' fathers, and she's 26, and she's, and she's not smoking weed anymore. This, this person says, Wendy, that caller Janet from Advice Hour needs to grow up. She really doesn't want her kids back, or else she would stop hoeing and get a real job. She's complaining about things not being in her favor, but she's doing it to herself, struggling like everybody else. Get yourself on top like everybody else does. I don't feel sorry for her. She knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's Raven. Al, all right. He says, when? Yes, indeed. Maya did get a Grammy for the Moulin Rouge song with little Kim, Pink, and Dem. Oh, so she didn't get that on her own. No, she got in the group. She got that because Missy and Kim were involved. There you go. There you go. Holla. <laughs> I see what's going on. Gwen Stefani has snubbed. Gavin, Gavin Rosdale. Now, help me. Gavin is her husband or Gavin is the guy she used to mess around with who's in No Doubt? No, Gavin is her husband. Okay. Tony is the guy in No Doubt. Thank you, Art. The reason that I am so confused is because I can only imagine the fights in their personal life because of this. Mm. Now, Gavin apparently is a producer. Yes. As well as lead singer of, you know, a rock band of his own. What is this band called? All right. Bush. I'm on the floor. Something that you don't know. Yeah, it's a famous one. Okay, well, Gwen has told her husband, Gavin, I don't want you to do any production. I'm going to spend some time with hip-hop producer Pharrell Williams. Oh. Can you imagine the fights going on at home? I mean, there has to be a better way of doing this. Like, why don't you and Pharrell do something? And then you whisper in Pharrell's ear, look, Pharrell, he, you know, he's here because at the end of the day, I got to sleep with him. But but help me, you know, and I'll slide you the rest of the money between me and you. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> they, well, they say Gwen has been relentless in promoting her debut solo CD and she had booked 10 days off to spend with her husband but changed her mind when Pharrell made her a better offer. Uh -oh. Spend with her husband, I would imagine that would be producing her next solo CD. Mm. And so Pharrell made her a better offer. So now they say Gwen intends to spend time in the studio with the hit maker, yes. Pharrell, Williams. for her follow-up CD. Oh. She says, and here's her quote about Pharrell. I was like, wow. 
That's very ambitious. I was planning to hang out with Gavin, but now I'm hanging out with Pharrell for 10 days writing songs. It's such an opportunity to work with him. So I did. Okay, divorce is imminent. Yeah. Mm, not just did she throw him over, but she threw him, threw him over for a Negro. A half Negro, half Asian. Half Suki. Yes. Half Suki Negro. Yes. Mm. It's windy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me at home and I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So, what should I tell her? Just... It, tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. It's just about that time of year. Time for another pot day. A WBLS party with a purpose. Last year, Fantasia, John Legend, Keith Sweat, and Brian McKnight sold out weeks before the event, causing many to be left in the cold. Don't let that happen to you. This year will be even bigger and better. We'll begin with a full holiday buffet. Then Chuck Chill Out gets the party started. Started with your favorite WBLS personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob. This is Champagne. Good boy David Levy rocking you and popping you. And this is Mark Jordan. Then get ready when Jaheim hits the stage. Yo, what's up? This your boy Jaheim. It's going to be a party, y'all. And Donnell Jones. Hey, what's up? This is Donnell Jones. Along with Jamie. F hold on, hold on. You can't say that just what, yet. You want uh, the... Just let them know when and where it's going to be. They already know the entertainment's going to be back. Mark your calendar for Saturday night, December 17th. It all goes down to the Broadway Ballroom with the Marriott Marquee Midtown. Oh, you doing it like that, huh? That's right. Ride the Marriott. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Putting an end to domestic violence. The WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose 2005 is brought to you by our friends at the New York Department of Health, urging all New Yorkers to get their flu shots by logging on to nyc.gov.com to find convenient flu shot locations. It's a party with a purpose. With 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. If you call me right now, you can get your share of one hundred and seven thousand dollars. We just giving you a thousand though, but that's still a lot of money. Be caller number ten at two one two five four five one zero seven five. One thousand dollars right here from one zero seven five WBLS. Hey, 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 BLS, you're calling number one. BLS, you're calling number two. BLS, you're calling number three. Hey, now, you're calling number four. WBLS, you're calling number five. And you're calling number six. You're calling number seven. You're calling number eight. You're calling number nine. WBLS, you're calling number ten. Oh, what? Ha, congratulations. You picked up a thousand bucks. <laughs> in our $107,000 cash guarantee contest. You see, we give away this money three times a day, and girl, the spotlight is on you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Janine. Where are you calling from? Manhattan. I hear some people in the background that you'll be sharing it with. Uh, yeah, my coworkers. Uh, oh, no, don't share oh, with them. And Vanessa. Oh, what are you going to do? Order them sandwiches one day, maybe? Yes, I have to. Well, that's an easy 20 bucks. Now, the rest of the money is for you, right? Huh? What are you going to do with the money? Oh, I don't know. Do you have family, like like yes, kids I and do. stuff? I have three kids. Oh, well, never mind. None left for you. <laughs> By the time you buy your coworkers sandwiches and your kids' new I shoes know, and Christmas toys. Know. But you know what? It's free money, so spend it the way you want. Don't Thank feel you. guilty. And my girlfriend Paula says you're her friend in, in her head. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. You got a sandwich coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations. Where do you work? MTA. MTA. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Well, let us know the MTA's radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. 107.5 WBLS. Ah, that's my girl. Hold on a moment. We're going to take your information behind the scenes. Everybody, keep it where you got it. The bonus hour is coming up next at the top of the hour on 107.5 WBLS. Yo, what up? This is Big Snoop Dogg, and you're listening to the queen of radio, Wendy Williams. You got to do it. Taking it back, baby. Taking it, it, it back. Back, 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 back. Old oh, school short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the ripple. Two, three. Play. A little play from back in the day. And me, it's Wendy, man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. 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 Wendy's got the heat. Wendy's got the heat. 
Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Il Nana Fox, Wendy Brown, and I'm checking out Wendy Williams. That's right, y'all. Wendy is back, and it's bananas, y'all. Check it out. Yeah, man, this is Rupi. Wow, wow. Yo, are your boy, baby, Sam. Can you hear me? Yo, yo, what's up? This is Kevin Little, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. We were having our book cover meeting behind the scenes. Steve said, um, you know, what kind of lashes do you want to use? And, you know, like that. I said, Steve, it's about making me look like I'm not me. He knows what to do. Bye, Steve. You know what I mean, Arthur? Yep. Do you understand that I'm, that you, you know. to be a character. Right. Yeah. I should have just gone with the model. Is that what you're saying? No. I think you, you're supposed to represent your own thing. Yeah, but I'm, you're not going to be able to tell it to me. I'm Ritz Harper. That's the beauty of Drama it. is her middle name. You're playing your character. Yes. But I don't want the character, I don't want the camera to zoom in on my face. I don't want you to be able to say, look at Wendy with the big rubber nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That part's going to be obscure. Yeah. It's about, it's about her aura more so than what does her nose look like? What do her lips look like? And all like that. That was going to be wonderful. I'm, I was so excited about uh, my book venture, my this, this one that I'm embarking on right now. I got the same writer that I've had for my first two books, um, Karen Hunter. We talked earlier this morning. I'm with a new book family, Random House, Double Day. It's just, just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, you know, and love and respect to my old book publishers. Um, but, uh, you know, they didn't come in with the right numbers. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's not personal. It's business. It's business. You know, and then, you know, the whole idea of me doing my novel series, you know, I don't want a one book deal. You know, now I want to commit to somebody. I want a relationship. I'm tired of just having cheap sex and leaving in the morning. I want a relationship. But I didn't want to form a relationship until I, you know, I knew that I was going to be able to turn out one after the other. Mm -hmm. Novel series allows that. I mean, what more can I write about my life? First, I got to live some more. Although I do have to admit, a lot has happened in the last two years. Uh-oh. So that's why, you know, that, that first book came out, Story of My Life, Wendy Brings the Heat. Probably a whole book worth of stuff. Yeah. But I'll wait. So, we were talking about Gwen Stefani and Dee from across the street. Hey, Dee. She works across the street. Hey. <laughs> Dee says, Wendy, maybe Gwen Stefani is putting her husband off because she is still dealing with the fact that after they married, it was discovered that he had a 16-year-old daughter. Oh. You know what, Dee from across the street? You could be right. Because while that story has calmed down in the tabloids, Gwen's got to deal with that every day of her life. Lie on that sword. Yeah, Gavin, lie on that sword. You did this. Gwen didn't discover this child until after they were married. A relationship based on deception. Lies. I mean, that's a big lie. That's a biggie. That's, that's humongous. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Gwen allowed Pharrell to... Uh-oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> toss her across the buttons in this recording studio. Uh-oh. And have his way with her. Oh, my gosh. Why not? He can do it. Oh, yes. Very charming. Very charming. He could charm. Yeah, very charming. Mm-hmm. Pharrell is one of my favorite red carpet run-ins. I've never sat in the studio with him. Yet. Yet. I've interviewed him many times. And he's always a lot of fun. And he never avoids the experience. Love to you, Pharrell. Cheers to you. Real Williams. Cheer. Oh. And how you do? Oh. Look at my face. How you do? Look, look, Girl Fridays. How you do? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't mean that in the how you doing sense. I'm just giving him a, a, you know, a greeting from the show. And that's what we do here. So the Irv Gotti Murder, Inc. trial begins tomorrow. Whole lot going to be happening with that. Well, we've got our court appointed intern 
who will secretly be in on the day's events in the courthouse every day. Who would that be? Should I say who? No, 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 don't say who. Yeah, because it's a disguise. That's true, yeah, don't say that. Uh-huh. Could very well be me. Oh. (laughs) Oprah Winfrey says she's amazed still at the display of love that Tom Cruise had for Katie Holmes on her show, jumping on uh, on the couch in, you know, euphoric delight. And she didn't believe the romance was real at first. She admits that. And here's what Oprah says about his behavior there that day. It was wilder than it was then it appeared okay it was wilder than it was appearing to me i was just trying to maintain the truth for myself because i couldn't figure out what was going on that's why i kept saying you're gone you're really gone see she was trying to digest all that was going on too hey gail it's Oprah's friend Gail. Twenty years. That's big, Oprah. I still am looking for that twenty. Uh, that's what you're going to get me for Christmas, because I said I remember now. It's all coming back to me, yes, Art. I saw the commercial the other day. I said that's that's what I got to get. Her. You did. Yes, I did. So I can look forward to getting that. Please, I got you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Yes. That the other day um, we were talking about Christmas gifts and Art said that he knows what he's going to get me. I know what I'm going to get you too, by the way, Art. I don't treat Christmas like birthdays, <laughs> only because you know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. You know, I realize that birthdays I'm not good, but that's only because it's an individual day just for you. Yeah. Christmas, you know, I'm out shopping for my mom, my dad, my kid, my husband. It's in the stuff. air. It's in the air. Yeah. So to, you know, pick up something for art, to get Goose something, to get Trev Hollywood something, you boys don't have to worry. Christmas is a whole other thing. And uh, you don't have to get me anything. Except for you, Art. Because oh, okay. I already told you what I want. Because right, 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 right. I know you're good for regifting, but I told you what I want, and that's economically feasible. Oh, of course, I got but, you. But for you, I think I will, uh, as long as you're asking, in my mind you're asking. No, but, but I want you to tell me. No, well, I will tell you. I'm getting you the same thing that I got you last year, oh, except that. I'm going to lift it up a bit. You gonna shush it up? Well, you know, it wasn't the best year um, for a number of different reasons. Right. But I love last year's gift, though. But but it was a pretty decent year this way. Oh, oh yes, no doubt, no doubt. So no doubt. I can I can I can lift that a bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, I gotta go home. <laughs> well, damn. Fez in Philly. Who wants to comment on Gwen Stefani and Pharrell Fezzi? Please call back tomorrow, first break of the show. I'd love to talk with you. Angela on hold, who wants to talk about Pharrell. She says he's not mixed. He's not mixed? He was mixed. Angela, can you please call back and and straighten this out with us tomorrow, first break of the show? God willing, we'll all be back together again. Thank you so much, Genuine. He's still The Bachelor. And his CD is in stores as of today. It's called Back to the Basics. The Basics. The Basics. <laughs> Damn, I never got a chance to share with you all what Miss Jones called me about behind the scenes. Oh. Damn, she called behind the scenes um, after Genuine left and we were talking and kikiing. <laughs> anyway, Genuine, good luck with your CD and uh, thank you all for being here today. I love you for listening. Bye bye. Party, people. <laughs> See you later. I'm saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. Shout out to Fezzy and Philly. Fezzy, are you still on the line? Is he still holding? Which one? Line one. Okay, Fez. Hey. Real quick about Gwen Stefani. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to call and say that um, her husband's music sucks. That's what she's going with Pharrell. Oh. His last CD sold less than 500,000 copies. Wow. He's terrible. Wow. Do you think divorce is imminent? Um, I think so, only because she's still in love with Tony Canal. <gasps> That's the basis. I think. Fez. Huh? Fez. I don't know. I just think she is. Like, I mean, it's so obvious. All them songs she wrote... It's all about him. And she Set even has out. a song about him in her new CD. So it's like, you know? Wow. I know. It's wow. terrible. Well, thank you, Fez. Yeah. Bye, Wendy. I love you. Bye, Fez. Love you, too. Bye. And let's just talk to Angela real quick. She's online, too. 
Uh, Angela. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Hi, I'm so glad you didn't hang up. I had to say goodbye to everybody else. That's okay. Okay, but now now it's us, and we can talk. <laughs> so, Pharrell is not mixed? He's black and no, black? No, he's, he's black, all black. Mom and dad are black. Oh. He's just chinky-eyed. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Well, no, but he's great. Thank you, Angela. You're so welcome. And you and Fez and everybody else keep it here, because the bonus hour is up next of the Wendy Williams Experience. Starts in exactly um, how then at 10, it hurts. It was really bad. A simple shave becomes torture. So when I tend to use the razor, I get bumps. The cause? Ingrown hairs. Infection. Inflammation. Anyone with tightly curled hair who shaves is at risk. Mostly people of color. UPN 9 News returns to the painful topic of razor rash. Sometimes you wish there was something that you could use to prevent it. And we found new answers. From lasers to lotion, see what's being done to stop the pain. Razor rash. Tonight on UPN 9 News at 10. One of 7.5 WBLS New York. Hey, this is Jenna Jameson, and I'm the number one porn star in the world. A toe is a toe. This is Lil' Kim, Big Mama, Queen B. Hey, it's Corinne Staffan. Oh, what's up? This is Heather Hunter, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. It's time to get nasty. The Wendy Williams Experience. Where anything goes. Wow. Wow. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Williams. Wendy got the heat. Wendy Williams. you all are turned off, but just keep listening, okay? This is especially for you. Just keep listening, and then we're going to do bonus hour. Thank you. First of all, first of all, first of all, let's get one straight. Wow. 
back as well. Oh. Well, then give it up for gay Steve, our intern. Thank you, Steve. That's a fabulous remix of Whitney Houston, Crack is Whack. It's fabulous. I didn't know whether to, what to do during that. You know, sometimes you hear music that's that fast, you want to clean your whole house. You know, you know, fast. I'm a scrubbing, I'm a scrubbing. <laughs> Does certain music in your car make you lean on the pedal harder? For me, the greasier and grimier the beat is, I mean, it, it, you like like the per- oh my god, lean on it. Come on. And then I'm pr- I'm leaning so hard physically, I'm almost out the window. I'm leaning hard, and my foot feels like lead. Oh crap! <laughs> Let me lean the other way. Ooh, I start buzzing my seat back a bit. I'm way back here. Yeah. Music is foul sometimes because it can really, you know. It's another level. Yes. yes. Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the bonus hour. Vibe Awards are on tonight. I forgot to remind everybody during the main show. By the way, Art, that DVD is in stores today. Oh. Yeah, so please, if you're going to get me one for my birthday, I mean, for Christmas. But I, I don't ask for it until Christmas. <laughs> I won't. Okay, I'm going to have it, but don't, <coughs> don't ask for it till Christmas. Can you re-gift me something, too? Okay. I, that That's always special. All right. Find something that, because you open up my mail every day. Right. So steal something from me. Oh boy, and give it back. And then give it back. Oh, yes, right. yes, right. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Or go up to academics. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, get me something, and then and then let me have it. I want I want to be classy this year. I want to actually get get you something. Nice. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, this Oprah DVD no, no, is big. No, I mean, in addition to that, because basically you asked for that, so that's like regifting mentally. Well, then can you get me that book that I was talking well, about I, yesterday? Can you let me surprise you with something? No, because I, I know what you like. I'm telling you, I'll regift it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm telling you, I will. All right, let a brother know that. Well, I love coffee table books. And you know that one that I was talking with you about um, yesterday, the the um, famous trans, uh, um, um, I'm sorry, what do you call it? Drag queens in movies. Oh, okay. From Vincent Price and all that other kind of stuff. You know, I love that kind of stuff. And I, that is, I forgot what the book is called. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll find it. I forgot what the book is called. I'll, find, I'll find it. Everybody has it. Also... I need a paper shredder for the office. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll order one from, you know. You, that, oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You order on the radio station's account. Um, yep, we need a paper shredder. Yes. And Art, I need one for home, too. Oh. We already have one, but I need another one. Because you, you know how cryptic I am. I go through paper shredder about every six months. Mm. I'd be wearing them blades out. <laughs> Shredding every damn thing. But you hide <laughs> And then, you know what? I'm the type of when I, after I've shred everything, you know, I pour like oatmeal or old spaghetti sauce or something in the pra- paper shredder thing so that everything's extra gooey and nasty. And then I put it in the garbage can. Dear Wendy, what do you know about sportscaster Good Morning America host Robin Roberts? Do you think she is a sister? And by that, I don't mean black. Sign crushed out in Brooklyn. 
Well, what do you mean? A lick sister? What kind of... What, what do you mean? I don't know anything about her. Robin Roberts. I don't... Yeah, I don't know anything about her. But 866... Wendy Fax, I feel more comfortable getting a fax regarding her than you guys just, uh, you know, getting on the radio. We put you on blast because, I mean, you know, Goose can always censor you by, you know, pressing the button. But I hate conversations like that. You know what I mean? I have a picture to show the entire room. And remember, this is radio, so nobody can see when you open your eyes wide and go. So give us a radio reaction, please. Kamora Lee Simmons on the red carpet at the Vibe Awards as a white blonde. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, my God. No, that's not right. Oh, no. First of all, she's just having fun with like a wig. You know, she didn't dye her it's actual much, hair. Too much fun. I don't stand. But I do have to say that her neck <laughs> still looks a mess. <laughs> But it airs tonight at 8 p.m. I don't know whether you'll see this on the red carpet. I don't, maybe she's presenting. I have no idea what. It's too much fun. Yeah, this is too much fun, right? Yeah. With hair. She's a deal on that one. Yeah. She's got a lace front wig on. So that it looks like it's growing from her head. Yeah, let's pass it around the room. You can get a closer look. She could have used a little. No, that's not her. She looks 10 years older. Yeah, she could have used a little press powder, too. Yeah. Really shiny. That's not a good look, right? Yeah. They say Oprah was so nervous about interviewing Diana Ross that she cried in her bathtub the night before the show. They say that she worships the singing legend Diana Ross. And she was scared that she wouldn't be able to control her emotions during the show. Here's her quote. Not only was I nervous, I sat in the tub the night before she came on and cried myself out. I was worried that I would see her and not be able to control myself, break down, so I had to get it out. I don't believe a word of it. No, either. I don't believe a word of it. Mm-mm. I love Oprah. But as I've gotten older, I've gotten more s- cynical about my love for Oprah. Mm. Girl Fridays, we were talking about this before, weren't we? Did we ever talk about that? It's not even a conversation I'd like to have in mixed public. Now, I'm not ready to have that conversation, um, you know, on the up high and everything like that. But let me see if I can capsulize it for you. My emotions for Oprah are very difficult to... Um, now, take the clock off. I can't do it that fast. One slip of the tongue and everybody will hate me. Just in case there are people out there who really, really worship her like that. Yeah. Um, they are. I will see, say this. Like 20 years ago, you know, when she started and stuff. I was a kid. And then, you know, know, she's on her climb and she starts doing her thing and blah, 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 blah. But I'm also getting my grown woman on at the same time. And what? Who was that goose behind the scenes? Elisa says to leave her alone. Elisa. Yes. Rush this picture in. Rush the uh, Kimora Simmons picture into Elisa. And then Elisa call up behind the scenes. Unless you... In, oh, yes. Watch that, in, uh, Zoe. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'd like to see you run. <laughs> you run. <laughs> is, uh, Zoe runs so crazily. It's so funny. She's so cute. She is so... I love her. So... I can't. You just let it go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let it go. When in doubt, leave out. Yes. 
Charday is on line number two. She's from Bloomfield. She has a biology degree, and she wants to do fashion. Isn't that interesting? Our booker, Elisa, who Zoe just rushed the picture, has a degree in biology, worked in the lab, mixing all kind of chemicals and stuff, decided how boring me and these test tubes. I'm a good-looking woman. I've got life to live. What am I doing stuck in here with a bunch of scientists with my biology degree? You know what? I want to be in entertainment. Yes. Put my big butt to use. And then she went on and she booked um, the guests for the Queen Latifah show. And then now she's here. Let's talk to Sadie. Or Charday. 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 Yeah, you're 25. Okay, Charday, hi. Hey, Wendy, I love you. Hi. I don't know how you get into fashion. I, don't, I mean, do you needle and thread it during the weekends in your part time? Well, I'm not trying to be a designer. I'm actually trying to be more like a stylist to the stars. Oh. Or, you know, working at like a fashion magazine. Oh. Um, and I just feel like I'm at a, I'm, like, I mean, I'm 25, but that's to me, I feel like I'm 19 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I'm young. I still, I don't look 25. No. Not that 25 is old, but I'm yes. saying, like, Yes. And, and I just. I'm just so confused because, like, even with the, like, right now, I'm waiting to hear from nursing schools, but I'm, I kind of just feel like I still want to be in the fashion industry. And you graduated with a degree in biology. In biology, yeah. How long ago were you bitten with the fashion bug? Forever. Just, I just, I just love fashion. But when it came. I seeing people look nice. But when it came time to apply for colleges and whatnot, um, your parents talked you out of it because uh, they wanted you to do something safe. Yeah, I never had. Story of my life. Yeah, I never had, like, the full support of my parents, and I know, like, if I did, then I probably would have definitely gone, you know, full frontal with fashion and my Or you could have bucked like the that. system like me. <laughs> you know? And take, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Oh take it a God. gamble. I'm sorry. Well, thank you, Charday. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what you would do. I mean, uh... I mean, do you think that, like, I'm being far-fetched by being 25 and saying, okay, I want to jump into the fashion industry? No. I mean, I you know, because uh, Lisa Payne, who books our show, uh, gra- graduated with a degree in biology. Okay. And she actually, um, you know, worked in the lab. Yeah, that me too. I worked at a pharmaceutical company for a year. Yeah. And, and while the money was great, the security, you know, and money to put into her 401k and all that other kind of good exactly. stuff. And her mom yeah. and dad, they spent all this money on her education. Exactly. You know, but, oh, here she is on the phone. I got to hurry up and um, hang up on you because the next thing she's going to walk around here and talk to you. I'm sorry, it cut off a little bit. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Goose answering the phone. Elisa, I can't talk to you while I'm talking to Charday. Oh, uh, you have to come around to tell me what you think about Kamora Simmons. Anyway, um, but Charday, um, no, I don't think you're far-fetched, if that's what you're saying. But I do say this, keep your day job. And don't let go of that until you're doing well enough in the fashion stylist business. That okay, but what if I have to go full full time? Like, if I have to intern somewhere, or if I have to, like, if there's a program, a training program. Well, I mean, I'm, wherever you're working right now, save your money so that you have money to carry you through your internship. Okay. I mean, do you have kids? No, I'm 25. I live by myself. Okay, no kids, yeah. good. Do you, is your apartment really pricey? Mm, I mean, I need a job to like basically pay for it, but okay. yeah, I mean, but, yeah, I need a job. I need some kind of income coming in. Okay. Do you have a car? Yes. And you pay your insurance and stuff. Yes. How how much are you? I'm just being nosy, but I'm also asking for practical reasons. What do you? What's approximately your monthly um, expense account looking like? Um, I would say like twelve hundred dollars. Well, between twelve hundred and fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so then you know that's how much money that you will say that the high end will say you need fifteen hundred dollars a month to live. So yeah. just keep in mind when you um, put the biology on the side to go full force with fashion, you need to somehow be making f- still fifteen hundred dollars a month. All right, and I wish you well, Charday. Thank you, Wendy. I Ta- love you. Take care. Bye bye. Kiss everybody for me. Mm-hmm. Bye. She said, "Kiss everybody for her." <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> Shout out to Jennifer in Westport. She's on line number one. Oh, gosh. Here's the technicality she was calling about. Her degree is in biochemistry. And what's, what's the new intern's name? I forgot. I forgot her name. Huh? And, Joel, you spelled chemistry wrong. Where do you go to school? Oh. Where do you go to school? C-H-E-M-E-S-T-R-Y. It's I-S. Where do you go to school? Where do you go to school? Huh? Lehman College? 
Oh, yeah. Turn it out the dummies. Ooh. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing, Joel. I'm just playing. I'll just, this way, he's just joking. What year are you there? All right, you got two more, uh, one, one, one more year, year and a half to get it together. She's a junior. I like Joel's hair. It's nice and big. Yeah. So, um, hi. I'm sorry, Jennifer. How are you? She Good, how are you? Good. So, now, it says here that you're 21, you have a boyfriend, but you're interested in seeing someone else. Right. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm a little confused because I've been with him for three and a half years. Oh, and okay. wow. the thing is, I, I've, I've known this guy on the other side, like, you know, on the side for, like, six years. And he's a great guy. He has his head straight. And I just don't know if I should just, you know, he's leading me into, like, trying to date and, you know, have something very serious, and I just don't know. Okay, I do. Here's what you do, because you're 21 years old. A relationship that started for you three years ago, you are a different person now than you were then, and you're coming into your womanhood, and if I were you, I would break up. Are you ready to break up with your boyfriend? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I love him, but now I just see this other guy who is way more mature than I am. He's like 26, and I'm only 21. Okay. And I like him, but I don't know okay. how well, far he could go. Here's the thing. Take the new guy out of the situation and just think about you and your present boyfriend. Okay. Do you have reason to end this relationship? And your answer, as you just indicated, is no. You, you care for him. You love him. Right? Uh, yeah, I do love him, but the thing is, I've been through so much with him that I'm a little fed up with, like, his family. There we go. Family. That's what I'm looking for. A reason to break up. Okay, so now you break up with him. Now, this, okay. is, this is how you deal with the new guy. And break up with your present boyfriend, please, before um, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that stuff. Don't be, you know, like a sucker and, and try to play him for gifts and all that stuff that really doesn't mean a lot. I mean, I know it means a lot at 21, but in the bigger scheme of things... Don't be an ass. You know what I mean? I know. I know exactly. Okay. okay. So now, and here's how you deal with the new guy. I know you've known him for like six years, and I know he's older and more mature and stuff. The, the reason that I'm asking you to break up with your present boyfriend is because you don't want to cheat on your present boyfriend to date the new guy because the new guy is going to look at you ultimately as uh, somebody who's a cheater. Even okay. though you're cheating with him. And he's not going to be able to trust you as his girlfriend if by chance you progress to that, you know? Okay. Okay. But the one that's older, the 26 year old guy, he doesn't know that um, I have a boyfriend for three years. I didn't tell him about it. Perfect. Then he'll never know, and then you'll already be broken up, and you'll be free and clear, and there's nobody who'll be running up on you. Now, are you all dealing in the same town with each other? Um, no. Perfect. Where's Where's your present boyfriend? He's in um, Westport. And where? Well, that's where you are. Now, where's your um, the the 26 year old? Norwalk. Uh, okay, so they don't share the same McDonald's, and you you don't you guys won't see each other out like that. No, absolutely not, because he um, he goes to school in New York for studying a doctor, and oh, my new boyfriend doctor. is. Oh. I mean, my boyfriend currently he is um, in Westport, so he you know wouldn't see the other one. What does he do? Um, construction. Oh, please. Construction, the DR period. Construction, the DR period. Shout out to all the construction workers, but you know I've got an unhealthy love for the DR period. I say go with the doctor. Here's the deal. Don't push the relationship into boyfriend-girlfriend. Let it marinate. You're just getting out of a three-year commitment. Be easy. Okay. And do nothing with the new guy until you've cleaned up the baggage with the old guy. That means when we hang up, you get on the phone with him and you say, are you around tonight? Like nine o'clock, I need to talk with you. Break up tonight. Oh, well. Okay. What, what would you do? Like, I never, I just don't know what to do. What do I do to like get over him? It's going to be like so hard. The next man will help you with that. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying. I know, I know. Listen, and as far as getting over, that's why they call it falling in love, because there is some hurt required. There okay. is nothing you can really do to get over a broken heart. Uh, but the good news is that you're the one doing the heartbreaking this time around. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. And if the, if the new boyfriend doesn't work out, there is no going back to the old boyfriend. So I hope you're ready. I think I'm ready. All right. Don't be all young. Okay, right. and Wendy, I'm so very, very happy that you answered my phone call. I'm very, very happy that you listened, Jennifer. 
And um, also, I love your show. I listen to you every day. And um, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And thank you for your advice. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Courtney's in Fort Greene, and she's on line six, and she wants to come. Oh, Courtney? Hello? Oh, gosh, it's you. Oh, damn, oh, I thought it was... Yeah, I'm sorry, me, everybody. Wendy. Oh, everybody, I swear I was caught in this. I thought it was a different Courtney. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, first of all, Wendy. Yes? Uh, okay, I just want to apologize to either Zoe or Shaylin, because <laughs> I called during advice hour last week, and I tried to fake my way through it. But whoever, uh, whether it was Zoe or Shaylin, they caught me right away. Well, what voice did they you like, use? Because I was uh, Kenny from Carteret. Okay. I was trying to talk like that. You know, I want to ask you something. Again. And, um, and, to- and I think it was Zoe who totally caught me. She said, Courtney, that's you. I know it. <laughs> that's but my girl. anyway, darling. Yes, okay, Courtney. First of all, shout out to Fez and Junebug. Okay. Boy, I am so envious. They were like, you know, they're the new Yardies. They they do get through a lot. They are the new Yardies. Yes. And shout out to Yardie. Yes. And his marital problems. Yes. And um, also, um, Raven. Okay. Yes. Now, Raven sent you a picture, right? Yes, he did. Okay, and he even called in and he played the biracial card. Yes, he did. Okay, I have no problems if you're going to play the biracial card. Yes. But... Don't do it if you have some hood in your voice. Because the day that Raven called in said he was like half black and half white. Yes. I heard some hood in his voice. And I'm like, um, so no, you feel no, not like, nice. You feel like if you're biracial, if you're like, we'll say half black, half white, then your voice should reflect the white side of you, not exactly. the black side? Exactly. Hmm. And, that's well, I mean, that's the way I feel. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having hood in your voice, but I was just like, okay, Raven, you decided to play the biracial card. Because he could just, you know, like Boris Kojo. Yes. I mean, he's biracial, but he doesn't play the biracial card. He's like a black guy. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. So, okay, now, speaking of having hood in your voice, okay, I was at this party last Friday. Okay, uh, a Cliff Notes version. Okay. Okay, it was mostly white people there. I came with my white crew, and there was four other gays of color there with their white crew. Okay, so there was only a few of you black guys there in the party. There was, there was three, okay, including myself. Mm-hmm. There was two other black guys, an Asian guy, and a Hispanic guy. Okay. Okay, so we all stood around the room with our white crews, and we're kind of snubbing each other because that's what we do. The, you black, know? the black guys. <laughs> well, yeah, all the black guys want to be the only black guy in the room. Got you! Okay, so I was the third black guy to arrive. Okay. And as soon as I walked in, oh my God, the mis- things were like... <laughs> What is he doing here? Oh, you gosh, so yes. So three of us, and so our crew started to intermingle, uh-huh. and so I meet black guy number one mm. named Andre. Mm-hmm. Okay, Andre's dressed all Banana Republic. Okay. Okay, he's trying really hard to fit into this little white scene. I mean, Wendy, it was so white, they were playing Kelly Clarkson CD. Oh, my gosh, but nobody was fitting in as well as you, right? <laughs> Right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So um, there's Andre trying really hard, and, you know, and he's speaking well enough, but I start to hear the hood in his voice. Oh, there you go. Okay, because, I mean, he... What'd he say, axe? Um, no, I didn't hear an axe, but it was just like, you know, like, like, Manhattan. Oh. And that brings me to my next. Uh, that brings me to my next chat bout here on the show. Courtney, I have to go. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. I swear to you, he did not know this. I've got a list of 10 ways that you have hood, in, to know that you have hood in your voice. Mm, there you go. Do you, wow. see my li- do you see my list? I, see your oh, list yeah. I swear I did not wow. know he was calling. Wow. I don't, need, I don't want the drum roll because that makes me have to rush. This is the bonus hour. We can luxuriate. Uh, just a bit, Goose. All right. I know we have to go into the damn break. Okay. okay. Number one. All right, this is 10 ways to know that you have hood in your voice. Number one, you say ax instead of ask. Number two, you say Manhattan Uh instead of Manhattan. Number three, you're dyslexic when it comes to pronouncing words like frustrated. Instead, you'll say frustrated. Number four, you say light-skinned instead of Light skinned. Number five, this is hood in your voice. You add an en to words that don't have it. Here's the example: modern, Mm-mm. modern. Oh. It's a modern house. 
You add S-H. Here's number six. You add S-H to words that don't have it. For the example would be, instead of street, you say street. That's a little technicality. I don't like that one. Somebody else made this. It came from blackpressusa.com. Shout out to you all. Um, Number seven, you say conversate, which is not a word. We go through this all the time on the show, but we use it in jest instead of converse. (laughs) Come here, let me conversate with you for a minute. Number eight, you exclude the word of. For example, instead of out of the way, you say out the way. That is very good. Number nine, you don't pronounce your R's. So you say flow and dough. Number 10, you exclude the word, the words going to. So instead of, when you say I'm leaving, it says, wait, you say I'm leaving instead of saying I'm going to leave. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave now. As opposed to I'm going to leave now. And can I add another one? Because we have a Keith in our family, and nobody knows how to pronounce that damn name. You said F. Like like how Anthony Hardaway's mom just went with this Splabuvian dialect and just said Anthony. <laughs> you can pronounce everything correctly as far as I'm concerned. Hood in your voice is a certain nasty role that you have in your voice. You ever meet somebody that can pronounce everything right, but they just got hood in... In their voice. Like, you can hear the pain and the struggle. And you can pronounce everything. You can say Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You can say modern. You can say light-skinned. But they just have a stank struggle. And they wear it all in their voice. All right. Goose is saying we need to go into a break. I'm going to tell you that. (laughs) It is time. It's 31. Yes, sir. All this time, I'm trying to figure out why the hell it is that the clock has the damn tape up there. And it's for Steve Harvey. Yes. Because he's syndicated, but he does a morning show, so he's got to give the time. That's what you do in the morning. You give the time. So the six is blocked out so that all you see is 31. So then he says... Because of the time difference. 31 minutes after the hour, and then that's right no matter where. Yeah. All around the country, it's 31 minutes after the hour right now. Can we lift the skirt off the six? I mean, can we lift the skirt off the first number when I'm in here, though, so I can see? So I could say 631? I ain't messing with that man's clock. But I'm not syndicated during this part. And even during the day when I'm syndicated, I don't have to give all the time and stuff and do an afternoon show. That's what what Goose is for to let you know when. Goose, what time is it? 631. There you go. (laughs) 31 minutes after six. Time to wake up. Yes. (laughs) Wake up, everybody. Oh, yes. It's the Wacky Morning Show. Wake up, everybody. 631. Oh, 632. You're running late. 632. 632 in the morning. You're running late. Which one are you talking about? Please. I'm just making up this. What the heck? I'm just trying to. We're going into the break. We'll be back with the rest of the bonus hour next on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, what's up? This your boy Trey Sons, baby. You listen to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Chill. This is Brenda K. Starr, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. This is Eric Benet, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Sorry, that was my stall tactic behind the scenes. Good job, Goose. I gotta tell you about this Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. The furniture for our pink office has been coming in little by little, and it looks fantastic. I got these silver tables. They are contemporary, sleek, modern. Girls, you've seen the silver tables in the office, right? The two different sizes of them. Aren't they wonderful? They're round. The silver is heavy. Art, I know you would think about sealing them, but they're too heavy to get to the freight elevator. And security would catch you on the security camera. Yes. I got them Benjamin Rugg at Home Imports. Amen. Stephanie Cohen, um, who owns the joint along with her husband, Ben, um, came over to the radio station and we used her interior design expertise. Listen, she'll do that for you, too. 
Because at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, they offer an interior design service to you. They will provide room settings, furniture plan, and the whole bit. And then they have Tom. Tom does the rugs, and they are gorgeous. What size do you need? Let Tom know. Wholesale prices at a retail store. At wholesale prices, you might need that one or two little extra things before your family comes for the holidays or before that New Year's Eve party or whatever it is that you have going on. What is it, a couch? Would you like leather or would you like cloth? Would you like a new armoire? Okay, are you going for, you know, the Asian look? Or are you going for something more contemporary? Or would you like something more classic in its design? They have it all. Do you need a new bed frame for your guest room? Do you just have a mattress and a box spring sitting on the floor? Child, it's time to grow up. (laughs) No, but you know what? The prices are terrific. And can I just tell you something about Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports? They have an exciting new finance offer. 12 months. No pay, no interest. Now is the time. The time is right. And Stephanie Cohen and her husband, Ben, are inviting you to stop by this weekend for a special rug promotion. Stephanie herself will actually be in the store on Sunday. But the store is open Saturday and Sunday. It's open seven days a week. They never stop working at 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports located in Secaucus, New Jersey. Wholesale store. Wholesale prices at a retail store. The Martha Stewart Signature Gallery, the launch of the Stephanie Cohen Furniture Design. Incredible rugs, incredible prices. Oh. Where are you going? Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. 201 617 Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. They've tricked out some some of our house, and they've tricked out the office. So it's safe to say Wendy Williams sent you. you. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports, 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Secaucus, New Jersey. Call them, 201-617-9000. Go to the website. I know you're busy. You want to see before you go. StephanieCohen.com. Thank you. A lot of clapping. Artie, Artie, Artie. We got the auditions tonight for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong yes. Show. New improved. Yes. Going on right now. The auditions have been going on since 6 o'clock. All the freaks and the singers and the rappers have been passing through the Laugh Factory. It is not too late for you. They'll be auditioning people. I say, Vale, I'm not going. I, you know, I said, you know, you know what we like. You know how to represent the show. I, I got um, some trusted people down there doing the judging. Sometimes a flat note is rather entertaining. I said, listen, if the note is flat, we're going for the funny. Now, we're looking for some Mariah Carey's in there, too, and some Jay-Z quality. But sometimes whack is back. That's right. Ooh, look at Stephanie. (laughs) Wait a minute, look at... What is Stephanie doing? Is this your couch right here? That's my couch. couch. Oh, you just went to Benjamin Rush. Oh, that's your ca- that's your oh my gosh, I feel like the skirt is lifted up on my personal life. That's your couch right there. <laughs> Damn sure is. That's the couch that I have in the office. That's yeah. the red leather couch. Yeah, standing out. Look how beautiful. Go to the website, stephaniecohen.com. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports to Caucus, New Jersey. That's all beautiful. And they provide all that stuff. Yes. Every tchotchka. Oh. You see? Oh, there's my silver oh, table. Oh, no. my gosh. You're in my personal life now. Yes. yes. <laughs> Look, that's the medium one. I got the medium and I got the large. Yes, you do. The silver table. Yes, right there. And I, I asked for a club chair that looks like, you see these black chairs also? Mm-hmm. They're going to be in the office too. Oh. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Look at the rug. Oh my gosh. From the rugs to the to the tchotchkes to the furniture. Everything in this picture is available at Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. Go to the website, stephaniecohen.com. Lovely tchotchkes. Isn't that a fabulous place? Yes. I like it. Ugh. Stephanie Cohen. Somehow I feel as though the skirt is lifted up though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Goose, don't say it's time to go. I'm not going not yet, anywhere. Not yet. You, should, you still have, you, you have time. Oh. 
Great. Well, then we can talk about stuff. Don't forget. Oh, by the way, and those auditions are at the Laugh Factory from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. tonight. And then, then for everybody else who's not interested in auditioning, you just want to see the drama unfold, I will be inviting you to uh, join us for the Wendy Williams Gong Show Experience. See? The comedy experience is different. This is the Gong Show. And I'm going to play Chuck Barris. Yes. And I'm going to wear a host outfit, which would be a little bit off to the left of normal. Yes. Artie, you know, the, the old Gong Show had three judges. Artie will be in charge of the judges, mm -hmm. and Artie will be a judge. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fabulous. Yes. Can I wear a tuxedo with the ruffles? And Do the whatever you want. It's fabulous, on. fabulous. Do whatever you want. It's going to be funny, and then people are going to come, and they're going to be like the studio audience, and we're going to be doing the gong show, and you all are going to be laughing, and we'll play for prizes and the whole bit. Yes. And somewhere buried in the cut every week is going to be somebody who can sign you to do something. I mean, so shout out to the artists who are the real deal. Yes, right. And don't be surprised if, uh, you know, all of a sudden an A&R pulls you off to the side and says, you can sing. Let me sign you up. Or Cirque du Soleil pulls you aside and says, oh, my gosh, you blew weed smoke out of your eyeball. Well, let us sign you up. All right. You know, or Artie wants to take you home because it's been a long time since he's seen a woman oh. able to contort her legs all, oh. all the way to the back of her head. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, Artie? I love it. Oh, the Wendy Williams Gong Show experience you improve. is really going to be something legendary. Oh. It's a, we're about to make history. Yes, <laughs> again. The auditions end tonight at eight o'clock. You can never have enough freaks and weirdos, though. So we'll probably have auditions again tomorrow too. I mean, the auditions are going to be constant. Stacy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. It's you know, amazing. the example that I gave earlier was, you know, if if you can play the bumps on your Johnson. Oh! <laughs> like, say you got those cauliflower warts. Oh. Right. Eight, eight years ago in college. Right. Might right. as well do something with yeah, them. Yeah, definitely. It would sound something like this. Uh-oh. Give me a beat. I'll give you a beat. That's how it is. <laughs> it's as simple as this. All right. You get yourself a number two pencil. Oh. You pull everything out. <laughs> We're in an adult setting. And you go like this. Show. Oh. See what I'm saying? You play them bumps. Oh. Turn up, you smooth. Say? Yes. You're so good with that. Come on. Well, those are the bumps on my Johnson. Oh! <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Take it out and you play with the pen like this. <laughs> Wendy. What? If you were a man, do you think you'd have a big, medium, or small Johnson? I know it would be circumcised. Oh, yeah, it would, it would be yeah, circumcised. Yeah, 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 it have to be. I think it would be medium. Medium? Yeah. Okay, it's like five. Hey, but I think I'd have big game. So oh. I would wear it like a very well hung man. Yes. Yeah, there you go. I'd have big game uh, for the men and the women. Yes. I think I'd be bisexual. Oh. <laughs> and I would have probably spent several years on the down low. Mm -hmm. And providing I had a career in radio, I would now be out of the closet, and I'd be out of the closet letting you know I am bisexual. Yes. I am not choosing. Mm -hmm. I want and it all. And I, I want it all. Oh. And I'd get on the mic, and I would share with you my various stories of what's all going on. I like that one. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. God knows what he's doing. He made me a girl. Mm -hmm. I'd be reckless if I was a man. Sometimes we, we women, we can be so stupid, present company included. Hello. <laughs> That's why I like Woody, because Woody gets, gives me a chance to embrace, you know, all of the multifacets of my personality. Oh! oh. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, baby. I have to work on my man rap more. See, I do better as a poppin' queen. How you doing? All right. <laughs> a toe is a toe. <laughs> Shout out to Lizette. She's on the phone from Penn State. She's driving back to school. She loves the show. Lizette, thank you for listening. We have to get ready to say goodbye. Shout out to everybody. Um, who is this? Oh, in St. Albans. Oh, D'Angela says Ed Scrimp. To your hood talk, scrimp. And Jennifer in Flatbush says, "Ed Valentine's Day, as in the time of the day, <laughs> Valentine's Day." You're right. That is hood. <laughs> Go Jones, eh? 
I can't believe she had genuine. Oh and she and Miss Thing and Wendy were talking in the back. I don't know what they were saying. Wendy clamped up when I walked in the room. <laughs> Oh, Jonesy, that'll be between you and her. <laughs> oh, I have one more fax. Dear Woody, Wendy's interview with Gen Wendy's interview with Genuine. Well, she fell for his good looks. Woody, he hasn't worked with Timberland since he got serious with Soleil, aka Carolyn Johnston. She has a reason to be going to church. The Terry McMillan said... Wait a minute, easy. Child, oh. I will leave this for Miss Fang, and she can deal with this if she wants to. Gotta go. Thank you, Woody. And we won't be dealing with this at all. Oh! oh. Shout out to Elgin Charles. Yeah. I mean, Elgin, um, what's his name? Lumpkin. Lumpkin. <laughs> Isn't that one of the things on the list? Yeah. A dirty blumpkin? Yes. <laughs> A dirty lumpkin. A dirty lumpkin. <laughs> Love you all for listening. I have to go. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye. The Wendy Williams Broadcast Day.